Bonjour. Good day. How is everybody? Hope that you're okay. It's time. What's up, mama? There's so many cool people in the chat. Look at you folks. Chit-chatting before the show even started. And hello to the YouTube chat. As per usual, I'm feeling a little bit sleepy. A little sleepy today, a little bit low energy. But that just means that we're here to have cozy time vibes. You know, it probably has nothing to do with the fact that I didn't have coffee today. Nothing. Has nothing to do with that. <laughs> hello, kitty tick. Welcome in. Yeah, eight hours of creaking wood sounds. Hello, in old Entish. Thank you for translating and not subjecting me to eight hours of creaking wood sounds. That would have been kind of a lot. So what's up, everyone? It's um, Wednesday, my dudes. Man, I had to really think. I was like, is today Sunday or is today Wednesday? It's one of those days for sure. So it's Wednesday. I hope that your week is going okay. I have accomplished a lot of what I had planned to accomplish at the beginning of this week. I took a relatively chill time this morning. I had a little bit of work to do, but I mostly was like, you know what, I'll take my shower, I'll, I'll get my hair nice and clean and shiny, which, you know, it's much shinier than I'm used to it being, it seems, in this particular moment, so, you know, whatever I did this time, it was the correct thing to do. And, oh, we've got news. Ugh, such news. I really only think that I'm gonna have, like, three genuine segments segments, but... We're going to at least talk about like four different topics over the course of today that we have planned. We will, of course, spend plenty of time talking about other stuff throughout the whole thing. What's up? South of Sleep Productions. An older TS girl here who fully transitioned over 25 years ago. I've never personally seen it this bad, but I am so proud of all the young trans people I see. So much courage and resilience. I, you know, I don't know how I would deal with being, like, a young person today. Like, I am I just turned 30, so I feel like, okay, I can genuinely consider myself, like, adult adult now. I'm not, like, a youngish adult. I'm just a normal adult now. I still got plenty of youth, but I'm just, you know, whatever. Uh, but I can't imagine being like a teenager or even in my early 20s during this whole nonsense. It just feels like it would be way too much to deal with. So mad ups to everybody who's working hard out there. I'm 26. I'm going to be young forever. <laughs> True. Yeah, we're going to talk about libs of TikTok later. Rah, rah, rah. I'm doing this thing now where uh, throughout the day I have to stretch my jaw because it's just been super not having a good time lately. So I'm like massaging my face throughout the day and like stretching my neck, which is all stuff that I should probably be doing anyway, but I'm doing it out of necessity because, oh my God, my body hurts. This is what it's like being 30. Your body just hurts. We should also cover anti-abortion laws. What's up? Is there anything special today about anti-abortion laws? How's the goop today, daddy? It's certainly goop. It's gooping. Yes, shout out to the two spirit folks. <laughs> Yes, Mama also into stretching her jaw multiple times a day. It sucks, like, because this kind of thing interferes with those activities. If, you're, if your jaw hurts and is, like, sore and doesn't want to, like, move right, then yeah, it gets in the way of your fun activities, like, you know, eating <laughs> and shenanigans. Arr. I'd like to unhinge my jaw. Mmm. Yes. The potential for more food in my belly. T 
TMJ. And I don't even know why it's so jacked up right now. And like my the entire rest of my body feels like I'm in more pain than usual too. Is anybody else having like a flare? Does Finster say shenanigans? Can't sing wholesome ballads with a sore jaw. I know. You know, it's really difficult for me to sing my uh my hymns with my jaw so sore. I've chalked it up to the weather. Yeah, I guess the weather has been like fluctuating a lot lately. My girlfriend just said you sound like her trans femme partner. I guess I'll take that. Is that why so many people are clocking me as a trans woman lately? I sound, I do sound like a trans femme now. Is that what's going on? <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay, I'm not the only one who's been having jaw issues the last two months. I did read that allergies can make your TMJ worse, so I'm just, I guess I'm assuming that it's that. Missed to the bugs? Oh, no. Here, you get some bugs. Real quick, some bugs. There you go. You got some bugs. It's getting more and more difficult to position the camera in a place where there isn't, like, a bunch of plants crowding in, because the plants. Good lord, the plants. Just T-voice with actual emotional range. True. I do speak, um, like my register is very far forward and up, um, in the way that women talk. Not exactly, but, you know, aside from my deep voice, I do kind of talk the way that women talk, by and large. I don't, it, you know, it's like that, that's where the weird sound comes from, because I can, like, open and expand the amount of space in the back of my mouth, and I could do it so much that it became habitual and like bring my voice out of my nose a little bit and down more into my chest and my throat it just would require a lot of effort at first and i don't have the intention to invest that much in voice training but like i can hypothetically make my voice sound more normatively masculine i have not figured out how to make my voice sound more normatively feminine because i refuse to make my voice actually higher, so <laughs> it's, uh, you know, non-trained trans femme or trans mask. Yeah, I mean, non-trained non trans voice. What did Haya do this time? She, uh, it's, you know, she just can't define wokeness. She gets put on the spot in public because she can't define the things that are apparently oh so terrible there's 55 people in here hit the like button babes we're chilling this is the chilling time of the stream enjoy hanging out and uh being cozy for a little while just kind of being try to just be human persons let's just be some human human beings together I'm still trying to get this to do a thing that it doesn't want to do. Okay. That's something. It's still not staying where I want it to stay. <laughs> eh. Oh my god. I don't know why they're so uncomfortable just saying wokeness is the things that I don't like. <laughs> we all know that it's true. Ah, uh, yeah. Ooh, oh, my hand. Okay, let me get rid of this music. I don't need the music anymore. Ba, 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 ba. I'm at work listening to my favorite. It, it's on YouTube. Hell yeah. Enjoy. We're coming here from different directions, but landing in the same place. Oh, gosh. Why are most anti-trans people also the most divorced people in history? I'm just noticing a correlation with that. It does seem to be 
a very popular midlife crisis option to be transphobic. Like it, it does. It seems to me like it's the option that lots of people are taking <laughs> to express their angst as they enter a new uncharted phase of your life. Listen, it's so it's definitely weird. I've never been divorced, but the conversation has occurred and it's like really weird to think of yourself as a person who's been divorced or like if, as you're, you know, thinking about the possibility of that being your future. It's like an identity crisis. It is like, mo like most of us, when we get married, we don't really plan on getting divorced. That's the whole fucking point. So, you know, these people, you know, they're, they're really going through something, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying that they don't deserve it or anything. I'm just saying like, th like they're going through something. Didn't Haya's fiance leave her around the time she started a lot? I, I don't actually know. I think she's with someone now. What about Steven Crowder? Some new news about Steven Crowder? I hadn't heard anything about him. The last time we covered Steven Crowder, he was being right, like hella abusive to his wife. It was crazy. I don't know who would want to, like the, it, the, the, the vapid nature of her responses is one of the most frustrating things about her, I will say. Oh, Steven Crowder is, he was openly bisexual for a while. I don't think it's really that he's closeted. He stopped talking about it as much, but he, he was like out as bisexual for a long time. Oh my God. Water. I think we start, we ought to start investing in bunkers because shit is going to get worse after this election. Yeah, I, I feel like, I don't know what most people are going to do. Like, I, I hope that most people who want to are able to move to a safer location where hopefully you're around more progressive people and not a bunch of crazy folks. You know, I'm hoping to move somewhere and then like with my partner and I both working combined, we might be able to like get a place to live that's more permanent. And then, you know, I, I keep, I just had the funny thought recently that it's like, you know, if you have some land and you're trying to protect it, if there's no more government, then you can put booby traps. <laughs> um, which I say is a joke. It was just a funny thought. My coworkers left and right politically are both in agreement about uh, what Andy said was, I don't want to vote for someone who's older than my grandparents. Like, I don't want to deal with having people who don't care about the future in charge. Like, I genuinely do think that there is something about these old people who believe in the rapture going, like, for these positions in government and... They don't care about like making sure that the planet is livable in a hundred years. They want the rapture to happen. So I don't know, man. That's how I feel, Kitty Tick. That's that's the position that I want to be in. Excuse me. Um, Kitty said, I have a massive I have the massive luxury of owning the property already, and I know my woods very well. Try to come take what's mine when it all falls down. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like if you could, if you have some land, if you and a few friends can put in together and buy a house with a little bit of land.
I want the raptor. Mm -hmm. I have not seen The Last of Us. It's on the list, though. It's on the list. 62 concurrent viewers. We're chilling right now. We're chilling. This is the beginning, beginning part of the stream where we're just talking about whatever. We will talk about politics stuff in a little while. But hit the like button now. Especially if you're about to leave. <laughs> Survivalism. It's a fun little world that we live in. Planning for a future where potentially the government collapses and maybe there's going to be a violent Republican coup. And my biggest worry is why did this have to happen to our generation? I know, Nerdy Gardevoir. Here's the thing. I am, I genuinely am so touched by... Gandalf's words on this. Like, obviously, we most of us have seen Lord of the Rings, so you know the quote, but it's like, you don't get to choose what happens during your lifetime. You just kind of have to do the best with what you are given. Like, nobody wants crazy shit to happen during their lifetime. And sometimes it falls to us anyway. So, you know... I'm going to be really upset when Sir Ian McKellen dies. <laughs> I'm going to be very, very upset. The only end of the world scenario that is likely is climate change. Climate change is definitely a big part of it. The problem is the constant seeking of uh, ec economic growth that like is imperiling the environment and causing so much uh, inequality. Yeah, it sort of depends on your definition of collapse and what your definition of the end of the world is. I'm hoping in the next 10 years to attract enough people out here to our county. The whole thing is only like 80,000 people. We need more lefties. <laughs> Listen, um, don't post in the chat, obviously. That would be dumb. But there's an enti it's entirely possible that I've been looking at land in your county. Ooh, I'm so fidgety. Ugh. I really would love to get one of those uh, cross-legged chairs. Do you know what I mean? The ones where there's like a platform for your butt. And sometimes they have a back. Sometimes they don't. There's a platform for your butt. And then lower down, there's a platform for your feet and your legs. So that you can be sitting cross-legged, but not like sitting on top of your legs and like t cutting off circulation to your feet. I need a chair like that, but they're like $400. Why? I pulled this chair out of the dumpster. <laughs> so it was free. Yeah, those chairs are so expensive. But I want one. Mm. Our little corner of Oregon is too red for two counties each direction. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's like, there's Portland, and then are any of the other cities in Oregon actually blue? Or is it just that, like, in the same way that Seattle, and I guess Tacoma to a lesser extent, like, Seattle is just super high concentration blue, and then, like, the entire eastern part of the state is Republican? Is there anywhere else in Portland, or sorry, anywhere else in Oregon besides Portland that's even remotely progressive? Damn, Mama says, I haven't talked to my dad in several years, and then two days ago I found out he is in a hate church, he's a climate denier, a Holocaust denier, and he's chair of his county's GOP. So that's fun. How best do I sabotage a political figure like that? I mean, I don't want to suggest anything. I feel like suggesting anything would be, I, mean, I don't want to add fuel to this fire, but the, the urge that I have is to add fuel to this fire, and I want to restrain myself.
Nope. I'm not fueling the fire. Portland, Salem, Eugene, Roseburg, the main blue. Is it just that little... It's like a valley. It's like a straight line from Portland down to Eugene. Is that whole area fairly blue? Hmm. Small towns between them, pretty red. <laughs> it's it's so weird how that works. Like, I there are so few places in the country that are purple, you know? It, it just feels like there are very few places where it's like, oh, well, you know, this, sometimes it goes Democrat and sometimes it goes Republican. We have a, we have an earnest mixture of the two. But like, yeah, I don't know. It's like it, you, it just feels like you are either blue and you're pretty fucking safe or you're in a deep red place that has no chance of turning. I don't like, man. So sure, there's tons of purple populations, but they are being gerrymandered separate from each other. Yeah, it feels like we need more purple people. I'm not purple, to be clear. <laughs> we just need more areas with, like, more diversity and, like, for the votes to not be so polarized. Moved to Washington after living in Mississippi. Best decision I ever made. I'm leaning away from Washington specifically, but I have a lot of great uh, friends who live there. Vivi managed to just uh, actually catch the stream. Nice, hello, welcome, and started a new job. High fives. Everybody out there working hard on self-improvement, whatever it is, you got a new job, you moved into a new apartment, you got uh, out of a bad relationship, you got into a good relationship, you're about to have surgery, all that stuff. I am just consistently rooting for all of you collectively to do awesome things. I'm kind of purplish, mostly because I'm pro 2A. Um, I think lots of leftists, like super far left people, are in are into guns and like pro Second Amendment. That's like one of the reasons why I would kind of rather live like not in Washington, because like other people are gonna have their crazy guns and whatever. If I live in a place that has pretty restrictive gun laws, then my own ability to defend myself is going to be nerfed. And uh, in an actual post-apocalyptic situation, I think that that's a genuine concern. Like, especially if I'm like, I want to grow my own food and stuff. Like, yeah, there are going to be people who want my shit in The Last of Us. Congrats on the swole. Nice. And congrats on... Uh, Getting another gig. Hell yes. What about my bow? It's actually put together right now. It's not strung, but it's put together. If you think about it, by 2032, the largest ascendant growing voting block will have 32%, and that'll be Generation Y, Z, and Alpha. I, you know, but what the birth rates, you know, but the birth rates... How, how will we possibly ever have the votes if we stop having the babies? I'm being sarcastic. I heard Don Jr. is bragging about his archery. Lux, how do you feel about sharing a hobby with someone so illustrious? I mean, I used to play the violin, and I would play one again. I do sometimes, whenever I get the opportunity, uh, dick around with a violin. And, I you know, I have that in common with Ben Shapiro. Isn't that so sad? I, I really like doing jigsaw puzzles, and so did my abusive mother. <laughs> like, I still do them. Oh. It's so windy this week. It's so windy, so I can't do archery. 
and it's a bummer, okay? Archery skills are incredibly epic. I mean, it's pretty satisfying, I will say. I got a I got a relatively inexpensive bow as a gift for my birthday last month, and it's something where, you know, I can learn how to like hunt food and provide and get access to like furs and different stuff. I'm really excited. I just got a sight. Oh my god. I know this is super niche content that not everybody's gonna be here for, but I, yeah, I got a bow, and I have a little sight on it, but I need to calibrate the sight. It does, it's not like automatic. I have to actually put it on my bow and adjust it and shoot a bunch until I figure out what, like, and then it has to be set at different places for different distances. Because, like, if you shoot an arrow, the arrow drops. So you have to like adjust where the site is. So I have to like probably spend a good hour doing that, but it's windy AF this week and cold. So it's just not, not the right time. It's so sad. It's probably for the best. I need to give my lats a rest. Like this muscle back here, my latissimus dorsi. Oh boy, howdy. <laughs> That's the muscle that you use to pull the bow. And it needs to rest probably a little bit. Guitarists everywhere coping and seething that thousands of shitty people also share their hobby. True. Ooh. Learning to adjust for angle and wind is a bitch. Listen, like, I don't mind learning to adjust for the wind. I'll deal with that. I just need to calibrate my fucking sight. It needs to be, like, I just need it to be accurate in the first place, under, in, in like, stable conditions. No, not a girly bow. It's not a very girly bow. Is it? Yeah, hold on. I Finally, I'll show it off after having had it for a while now. <laughs> it's going to be kind of hard to see all of it because it's almost as tall as I am. <laughs> so it's, it's a recurve bow. It's not strung right now. This is how you hold it. So normally these bend a lot more when the strings are strung and yeah it's it's pretty much really fucking cool <laughs> being honest this is the site so i have to adjust it you know and and then set like oh it's supposed to be at this height if i'm shooting this far away it needs some dampeners that's the thing it really needs to okay i'm gonna go put it back down bow content yes um if there's more of that it will be on the second channel which is currently called luxander 2 yes the recurve is classic Mwah. i have a 78 pound myself holy shit um my, yeah my bow's only 20 pounds it's a starter bow i can pull it for like hours and like the only it doesn't really hurt me the only thing that sucks is um like the after a while the thwang and like if you don't have dampeners the like the like vibration of the bow kind of sucks but i can pull it all day um it's only strong enough to kill like rabbits though so if i wanted to hunt like deer or something bigger i would have to get a heavier bow padfoot's deer is our beard is coming in better high five Apparently, we could tell who was an archer in medieval warfare because the training to use an English longbow was so intense that it would alter your bone structure. Shit's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they would need to be really, really heavy bows in order to shoot, like, really far and, like, over castle walls and shit like that. So, that tracks. Your draw arm shoulder is massive. Your, I feel like your draw arm shoulder shouldn't be very big because you should be drawing more from your back than your shoulder. Your 
stable. Here's this shoulder hurts me way more when I'm shooting my bow for like three hours. <laughs> um, it it's my um holding shoulder when, when I'm like I'm holding the bow. This it's my back here. I think most war bows were probably 100 plus pounds. Fuck me. <laughs> oh my god. That's crazy. <laughs> my bow arm is the one I injured, not my draw arm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And there's nothing like thwacking your arm with the string, too. I'm trying to get better on my form. I'm not too bad about it. Some war bows were up to 200 pounds. Jesus Christo. How would you even pull that thing? <laughs> I don't even understand. I don't get the physics behind that. Mm. You need arm guards? I do wear an arm guard. Um, but I'm hoping to just get better and not have to wear it all the time. Japanese longbows were up to 200 pounds. Fucking hell. They would train from early childhood. That makes sense. In a militarized society, and you're like, okay, we need specialized soldiers. It's very funny how, as we approach, like, first of all, people can't afford to eat. So I've seen folks talking online about teaching themselves how to hunt and forage so that they can survive because they cannot afford food. Um, and like, as that's happening, and then all like the climate changes stuff is happening, and it's changing the availability of food in that way. Um, medieval conversations we're having medieval conversations about hunting and <laughs> like hunting foraging oh how are we going to start spinning our own yarn like these are the conversations that i have on my stream it's a fun time I, you know i've always been into medieval fantasy i didn't actually realize that i was accidentally doing like prep i was prepping my entire life for the future. I thought I was like, oh, this is a fun thing about the past. <laughs> oh, geez. If you want to kill medium to larger game, you want 80 pounds at least. Deer and elk, you would need bigger. Really? 80 plus pounds? Bows are the medieval weapon that requires the most upper body strength. I mean, yeah, it depends on, you know, what you're... I mean, yeah, if you're using a war bow, sure. <clears throat> if you're doing a hunting bow, not necessarily going to have the same kind of requirements. Oh my god, drink more water, babes. 69 viewers. Can we get to 69 likes? Goodness gracious. Dungeons and Dragons had it so backwards. Bows are the strength weapon, long swords are the finesse weapon. They also in D&D, don't they also have arrow arrow damage is like less intense than damage from other weapons? I knew an old guy who was like, "Oh, I only play with house rules basically when it comes to bow damage because the actual kind of damage that you could do with a bow, like if you shoot someone in the leg, they're not necessarily going to be able to keep limping. <laughs> like, that might actually fuck their leg up <laughs> in a way that they cannot keep hobbling along. Yep, arrows are scary. I don't have any actually dangerous arrowheads. My arrows have training tips on there, just tra just target tips. But yeah, I'm looking into what it required was required to get a hunting license in my state and listen this is so silly traditionally you would need to take like an in-person class if you need like uh, you you officially are need, need to be taught by an actual hunter but on the website 
where you learn these things like, okay, in order to get a hunting license, you need to pass some kind of hunting class. They have a link on the website. And so I think I'm going to have to double check into it, but I think that you can just take an entirely online course from the NRA. <laughs> like, so instead of having to actually physically go in person to have a human being teach me over the course of like a month, um, yeah, I can just take an online course through the NRA, which feels like, okay, that's pretty simple. I just need a printer in order to print the little, you've completed a hunter's education thing. And then I, I legally have a license to go kill <laughs> some animals. Wow. But then you have to like, get, you have to get an extra tagging license or something like per deer, I think, if you want to hunt deer or elk or whatever. It's so strange. Primitive weaponry, yes. It's just strange to me that you can take an online hunting course and they're like, yep, that's good enough. Salute, I salute you. All right. Hunting licensing classes were taught at my middle school. That's fire. That's fire. Back, uh, around here, some warrior says, got to bring the deer in the back of your truck to one of the local gas stations to declare it. I also was seeing a, a guy who was, he did a video teaching you how to dress down a deer in the field, like how to get the guts out of it so that you can then drag the whole carcass <laughs> out of the mountains or whatever the fuck you're doing. Um, he said that in some places you're required to leave the genitals attached to the hide so that the animal can be sexed when you bring it back i guess i don't know exactly what the procedure is but it was just like while he was taking the skin off of certain areas he was like yeah i'm gonna leave those balls on it just like attached to the hide fascinating I fem in everything except my wardrobe. <laughs> my clothes are all manly. Fun stuff. I did not expect myself to become a person who's like, I have foraging books. And I mean, I could have guessed the foraging part maybe when I was younger, but me being like excited to learn how to hunt, it's not something I would have, uh, Anticipated. Are you for or against killing animals for any reasons? So, um, philosophically, I have come to this place where, um, I don't think that death is inherently a bad thing. I mean, generally you want to avoid it. Like, obviously like suffering is something to avoid. Um, but like the life cycle requires death. So it can't always be a bad thing. You know, so many beautiful and amazing mushrooms and fungi wouldn't exist. Um, I don't think that you should kill things senselessly, like just for the sake of doing it. You know, if it's a pest and it's ruining something of yours, if it's ruining your food supply, if it's eating holes in your house, um, destroying like something that you need, like eating wires or something, you know, then I think getting rid of or killing animals is justified. I think that for the most part, you should eat them or you should plan to feed them to something else, like unless there's a disease going on of some sort. Um, yeah, I think that factory farming is awful. And I, I honestly think that me hunting rabbits and 
killing them is probably more ethical than me going and buying beef from the store in terms of the conditions that those animals are living in, in terms of the total, like the total sum of carbon emissions that goes into the process of producing and transporting that beef and processing it. <laughs> so, yeah. An invasive species, yeah, if I'm hunting something that, like, they need the population to be nerfed because, you know, the natural predators are not doing so well, then yeah. Like, the reason- <laughs> rabbit season is all year. You can hunt rabbits all year in Kansas because they're pests, and you can bag ten of them per day because, like, they breed a lot, and if they go and just breed and they aren't being- there aren't enough coyotes to eat them or whatever, then yeah, it's a problem, so. <laughs> Hello, Silent! Hello, don't who am I? Oh, whoa! Always great when you wake up from cuddles and find a nice warm tea waiting for you that you totally forgot about. Steeped for one hour. Hey, it's good that it, the tea is still warm. That's nice. Eepy girl. Um, really, hunting on your own would be better for the factory slaughterhouse workers as well. Slaughterhouse workers get PTSD super often. The rate of alcoholism spikes close to the people who are living close to a factory farm. Interesting. It, like, I'm guessing it must be because, like, of the conditions. It can't just be the being around death, because then hunters would all have PTSD. It's gotta be something about the specific like, the inhuman process of it all. So, I- I don't know, man. I, I do think that hunting can be fun. I think it's okay for it to be fun. As long as you're not doing it, again, senselessly. Like, I think if I've been practicing with my bow for, like, weeks or months, and if I go out and I hunt rabbits, and maybe the first couple times I'm not successful, um, then I think the first time I successfully bag a rabbit, I'm gonna be like, that was fun, and I'm excited and proud of myself. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine that there's somewhat of a difference between hunting personally versus the killing involved in a production line of a factory farm. I did not know that, Kitty Tick. That's terrible and I'm not going to repeat it. Reminder that going vegan is not enough. Under global capitalism, any vegan foods that you're not explicitly taking care to ethically source are definitely going to be uh, products of human and environmental exploitation. They keep pushing almond milk as like an alternative to um, cow milk, but it takes like an enormous amount of water to produce just one almond. Also, almond is all sugar. Really? I thought that there would be some proteins and fats in it. But yeah, we were that was a discussion that y'all were having in the Discord earlier in the day. I saw like a conversation between like cow's milk versus oat milk, almond milk, soy milk. It seems like oat milk is like the least invasive and tasty and, and milk-like alternative. Almond milk is often very vanilla and sugar flavored. Okay. Cashew har- No! I love cashews! <laughs> no! Oh, I hate almonds! It's easy for me to stop eating almonds! <laughs> Don't tell me that cashews are bad! <laughs> oh, I'm so genuinely upset right now. 
Eric says cashew harvesting is messed up too. It gives severe chemical burns to the workers who are rarely, if ever, given appropriate personal protective equipment. <laughs> no. I'm gonna cry. Dude, I love cashew so much. Oh no. Oh, my eyeballs. I literally had a meltdown when learning this. Oh, no. That's the saddest thing I've heard all week. Oh, no. What about, I know, what about pistachios? Please don't tell me pistachios are bad. <laughs> no. Oh, God. The plant itself is hypertoxic, but the nut is edible, so we decided to put people through the cashews. No. Raw cashews are quite problematic to humans. I mean, I pretty much only eat roasted cashews, right? Are we allowed to eat pistachios? <sighs> that really messed me up for a minute there. It really did. Are pistachios bad for the environment? So pistachios are one of the most water-intensive nuts. They're often grown in California where conserving water is essential, but the CO2 footprint of pistachios is lower than that of a lot of other nuts. Is pistachio harvesting bad? I don't see anything about the harvesting being bad. I know you can eat acorns. I'm not excited. I'm like, they don't seem like they would taste good though. Are they good? Cause I mean, yeah, you can eat acorns. You can just get acorns anywhere. Pistachio is kind of, uh, like it's not a good crop for California specifically, but they are not as bad overall as almonds who just want to fuck up the air and water for fun. Okay, so acorns can be good when toasted. Okay, peanuts. How do, how do any of these things even actually grow? I've ju I'm just realizing that I have never had any intellectual curiosity. It's like, are cashews, do they grow on trees? I did not hear about Hassan getting on Australian TV. Pistachios, cashews, and mangoes are all poison ivy variants. Fascinating. Okay, so cashews do grow on trees. They hang off of cashew apples. Peanuts, by far the simplest and most productive to grow in North America. Okay. Pistachios also grow on trees. Okay, so I'll have a pistachio tree and a peanut tree, right? And then if I want cashews, I'll have to have a cashew tree and figure out how to harvest them without getting, like, poison all over me, apparently. Okay, Anarcho Delphus corrects us. They're not poison ivy variants. Peanut gang. I'm so lucky I'm not allergic to anything. <laughs> Ugh. Most nuts come off of trees, other than peanuts, who are silly and grow underground. Peanuts grow underground? <laughs> I feel like I must have known that at some point in the past. That's silly, though. It's, like, so silly that they grow underground. Okay. Wow. That's so weird. This is how peanuts grow, you guys. There's like a tree or like a little bush. And then it kind of like puts, it drops these little things down and then they root down in the ground. It's weird. 
Why are you so strange? I've lost 50 pounds in a year cutting out all snacks except assorted nuts. That's really impressive. Ooh. Spider tree. Spider tree. Spider tree. Same, but I cut out soda. I I think I'm gonna start being like a I have Gatorade around the house all the time kind of person. I'm not like a soda person, but I am a I need more salt and electrolytes than I'm getting kind of person. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I've enjoyed this convo. It's been good. It's been a nice relaxed time. Meandering through a number of topics. We actually managed to have a mostly chill convo. Sometimes in the beginning where we start talking about doom and gloom stuff despite my best efforts. Yeah, I know acorns, like, you have to treat them weird because they have so many tannins in them. So just eating them on their own, you actually need to, like, soak them for a really long time. <laughs> Literally, we're all on a real-life doom-scrolling campaign, it seems. I'm trying my best. <laughs> listen, I'm, listen, when I'm, when I'm in my off time, I'm making a giant mandala for myself. I had to frog the same three rows, like, twice. So... That's why it's not any bigger than it was the last time I showed you guys. It's fucking annoying. Oh my god, Kitty Tick, I'm so- this, You're living my life that I want to live. Building my tropical greenhouse and desert dome so I can have everything myself. I, I guess I don't really- I've never really thought about having a desert dome. I don't really feel like I need that, but... What do you grow in a desert dome? today. Look at those peanuts. Such silly little guys. Other days. So here's the fifth concurrent apocalypse that's happening right now. You know what? We'll get into the apocalypses. Soon. Soon. Oh, most cactus fruit are edible? Oh, okay. Certain cactus and specific arid trees I love. I just got night glow lasers for my loft. That's exciting. I just keep- I, I keep trying to learn to crochet and it just hurts my hands and- and knots up. It does require certain hand strength, so if it hurts your hands, then that kind of makes sense. But it is probably hard to do without having a human person there to show you what to do. I- I certainly don't think that I learn very well without, like, seeing it happen in person. I tried to teach myself how to knit and it was very difficult. But someone taught me how to crochet face to face in person, so easier. Oh my god, yawn. So sleepy. The sleepiest little boy. Dragon fruit is the fruit of a cactus. I think I finally ate dragon fruit recently. It's like pink on the outside and it's like white on the inside with a whole bunch of like little black seeds in it, right? I it was really underwhelming to me, but it was in for me it was in a container with other stuff that was way more flavorful, so it might have just been that in context it was not very stand out. It's kind of meh. <clears throat> GF is gonna spend night with a cousin. Gonna be lonely in me bed. I know, so sad. I reliably have uh, a person that I can steal their warmth from at night, so I sympathize. Dragon fruit looks cute but tastes like nothing. Yeah, it doesn't really taste like much. Oh yeah, it might have been underripe. 
if it's supposed to be anything like kiwi, then the thing that I had was just not ripe enough. It's a thing. Like, I don't really like mango unless maybe if it's just, it needs to be ripe enough. I really like mango leather. Like, when they take strips of mango and just dry it, and it's like, ang, ang, ang. that's usually pretty yummy. I know, I'm sorry, I can't, I don't like mango. I keep trying. And I'm confused every time. I like, every time I try to eat something that's mango, and I'm like, Bleh. and I'm like, I thought that mango was supposed to be good. Apparently, I just don't like mango. I want it to be yummy. <laughs> I, I always assumed it would be yummy. I just happened not to like it. I want to try more fruits that I've never tried before. I know, defamation. You need to try Adolfo mango. Okay. McDonald's smoothies ruined mango for me. McDonald's smoothies tried to ruin mint for me. They certainly tried. The most messed up thing I ever found out is that dried watermelon tastes exactly like watermelon flavored candy. Like Jolly Ranchers? Like watermelon Jolly Ranchers? Listen. <laughs> yeah, dried mango is pretty good, but is it like because it has the quality of really, really ripe mango? Like dried mango can be pretty yummy. I do love watermelon Jolly Ranchers. They're pretty delicious. Wow, we gotta talk about news at some point today. Let me tee up. Let's see. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? We have this Tennessee thing, Pastor Mark Burns, and Kaya Raichik, and Bird Flu. Yeah, those are the topics for today. You have to sniff the mangoes to tell if they're ripe. Okay, I don't usually eat raw mango. It's usually like a mango flavored something or like it like it's a fruit leather with made primarily from mango. Like yeah, if I ever get them and buy them, I'm sure I'll have to check if they're actually ripe. Do you like spicy food? I do like spicy food. Not all the time. And not, like, an insane amount, but boy, when it's good, it's good. I love ghost pepper <laughs> so much. So much I love ghost pepper. It's, like, such a sweet, delicious fruit. And then it's hot for 10 minutes, but it's so worth it. I imagine if you added some citric acid powder to dried watermelon, it would probably just taste like watermelon Jolly Rancher. Ah, uh, yum. Fruit roll-up is dehydrated fruit for the most part. I thought that fruit roll-up was, like, mostly corn syrup. Like, fruit roll-up, fruit by the foot. What's up, soy boy? Strawberry habanero jam cheese fries. Best appetizer I ever ate. I just... I don't really like the flavor of habanero. I'm just not a fan. I don't know. It, like, the spice is fine. But I just... I just don't think it tastes good. So I don't want to eat something that tastes bad and is really hot. It's like you've defeated the entire fucking point for me. Like it has to taste good. It has to be a good experience. So jalapeno, I'm all about jalapeno because it tastes good and it's got a really mild spice. Ghost pepper, man, if you're ready to hurt, then, you know, enjoy that endorphin rush for 10 minutes, but it's going to taste fucking so good. I get really annoyed when I buy something that's supposed to be ghost pepper and I start looking at the ingredients and it's like the, the of the spice ingredients, the number one thing is like it's habanero or it's cayenne. 
And I'm like, I want this to taste like, but ghost pepper is just a marketing shorthand term now that means spicy. I mean, it means extra spicy is what it means. And like, they do usually put some ghost pepper in there. It has a, it has a particular name. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but yeah, it's, it's annoying to me. I've got an argument between Scotch Bonnet and Ghost Pepper for favorite hottest pepper flavor. I don't, I can't remember if I've had raw Scotch Bonnet in order to make a judgment there, but I've had raw Ghost Pepper and Ghost Pepper products and it, I'm salivating. Like right now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, so it's just, Ghost Pepper is so good. <laughs> it's so good and it's hot and I'm just like, uh, oh man. Oh, true, Cassidy. Pickled jalapenos right out of the jar with a fork. I, I would not use a fork usually if I'm eating um, olives or jalapenos or something directly out of the jar. I use chopsticks and I'm like, I drop them into my mouth. Spicy cherry jam. Ooh, yes. I love spicy jams. They're so good. Uncomfy. Welcome. I can't really handle spice too well. My tongue can handle it, but my stomach cannot. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I know some people do tricks like they eat a lot of bread before they know they're going to eat something spicy or they drink milk before they're going to eat something spicy or they just take Pepto-Bismol. Um, it's like if you're really committed to the spice, you'll do anything. It's the same as people who are lactose intolerant. If they're really committed to eating dairy, there is nothing that will stop them in the world. They're, they're like, I'll take, I'll take my lactate or whatever or I'll just shit my brains out later. Like they just don't care. I've been sipping straight Worcestershire sauce on occasion. I mean, I do think that that is a bit weird. What is this? An indigenous cultivar chiltepins? What is this? Oh, it's peppers. Peppers? Eddie, welcome to the website. Straight wishes sure will wake you up a little bit. Something that I was doing for a little bit, like not even a week, like morning energy shots. I was taking some like either orange juice or pineapple juice and I would just put it in a shot glass. And then I would, I took some like powdered turmeric because that's all I had, powdered turmeric and like some raw ginger. And I, I grated some raw ginger with my like garlic mincer thing. Um, and a pinch of salt because I need salt in the morning. <laughs> and I was just like, shoot it. And like, boy, howdy, if you just shoot straight fucking ginger, Anything in the morning, wow, it wakes you up just immediately. Doesn't mayo have dairy? No, mayonnaise does not have dairy. It's made out of eggs and oil. It's an, emulsif it's an emulsification of eggs and oil. It has no dairy in it. Mm. Hello, Crane. Welcome to the website also. For those of you hanging out in the YouTube chat, first of all, thank you. Second of all, you can hit the like button if you want to. Third of all, if you're interested in joining the illustrious website chat, this is not Twitch. It's my website, luxander.net slash live. And while we're doing calls to action, did you know that I have a merch store where you can get stuff like this cool hoodie? It's like, it's only like 35 bucks too. Like it's pretty inexpensive for a branded hoodie from like your favorite YouTube creators and shit. And it's so nice. Like I genuinely, mostly I just wear it for the show, but I wear it like, 
sometimes I'll be like, oh, I'm going to do the show in a couple hours and it's a little chilly. I'm just going to get into this while I'm doing my prep work for the show. And it's like nice and soft on the inside. Mm -hmm. Get a blender and frozen fruit and use any juice of your choice. I mean, yeah, I just don't want to run a fucking blender <laughs> at 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it sounds real bad. Um, I have to be pretty... I have to be pretty far in my day to be able to deal with blender noises. But I could, like, batch. I could I potentially, like, batch a whole bunch of, like, ginger and juice and whatever, like, turmeric and some salt and, like, just make my week's worth all at once. I love the sweatpants. They're so comfy, soft, nice. I don't have any of the sweatpants, but I'm glad that they're good quality. I almost always add Buki's scorpion pepper hot sauce to my spicy food. D is scorpion pepper yummy or is it just punishing? That's the conversation that we're having is like, you know, we, we like spicy food, but are we going to eat it if it's just spicy and not yummy? Not me. Not this F slur. <laughs> I'm just not trying to, I'm trying not to drop casually slurs. <laughs> it almost happened though. But uh, yeah, I, I, I should add on my farm list, like, I need to grow some kind of pepper. Jalapenos are the easy ones. I can grow jalapeno peppers, and then I'll have access to the spiciness, but, you know, I need something more spicy than that. We love a casual F slur. Listen, I really, I was like, I was like, oh, <laughs> don't do that. Yeah, jalapenos are yummy, but if the world is about to end, and I'm thinking of providing, like, a robust thriving, life worth living kind of amount of food for me and my family. Like, we need something spicier than jalapenos. What's up, Angelica? <laughs> Crane says, um, on a bet, I had to take a shot of Carolina Reaper sauce and then I had to leave work because I was throwing up. Yeah. I mean, that tracks. That makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense to me that that happened to you. That's way too much. Carolina, what? Yeah, Carolina Reaper sauce? No. The, like, Pepper X is hotter than Carolina Reaper, but Carolina Reaper still for a long time held the world record. Like, holy shit. Oh, gosh. I don't think I've ever had anything with Carolina Reaper in it. I don't think. And it just, it looks like Satan. It doesn't look like it would taste good. Yeah, Carolina Reaper is still more of a chemical reagent than produce. <sighs> oh, good lord. Okay, we're having fun. We're probably going to switch modes and start talking about politics soon. Curry is the best for spicy. It's so good. I can go ghost pepper scorpion as long as there is flavor. I haven't made a curry in a while. Curries are yummy. They just take a fucking really long time. Because it's all about building flavors. It's all about building layers of flavor. I probably could just buy some curry sauce and just make some chicken and throw the sauce on there and not sweat about it. You ever feel like you have a burp coming and then it just won't? There we go. Wow. Like a full 20 second wind up on that one. Uh, how been your Easter day? Easter Day was fun. We did my birthday celebration stream on Easter. It was Trans Day of Visibility. So it was a pretty fun day. We talked about some politics. We hung out. And then I didn't go anywhere or do anything.
All hail Jesus T-Boy Day. I know, not yet politics. I know. Isn't it such a bummer that my entire channel <laughs> is built on talking about politics? <laughs> we mess around a lot on the stream, but make no mistake, the channel stays afloat because of the politics content. Actually, we're getting to a point where I'm start like previously I've barely made a hundred dollars a month through ads, but I'm getting to a point where I'm making like several hundred dollars a month through ads. So is your B day on TDOV? It might be. My birthday is the last week of March. The specific day doesn't matter. We celebrate it whichever day my stream is. It was Bunsen Burner Day on Sunday. <gasps> no. Bunsen burners are like a thing in chemistry, aren't they? Two days after Trans Day of Visibility is Autism Awareness Day. True. It's our week. Gorgeous. Okay. I know. I know. We don't want to talk about the politics. see i think like two of these things i'm not sure are gonna make proper segments but i do want to talk about them on the show a bit your piece on project 2025 was frightening and informative thank you i don't remember that one specifically but yeah i mean there this uh republican project has been ongoing for a while and it's still being built under biden's presidency so we need to remain vigilant especially on those local elections, you should try to inform yourself who's running for local school board because that will determine what your kids are learning in your classrooms. Oh, gosh. Mm. Yawn. I may be mixing you up with another content creator. You might be mixing me up with Dead Domain. Because I know Dead Domain recently did a whole big thing on Project 2025. And I like Dead Domain quite a lot. There's some mutual respect there. We should do some kind of collab together. What should I talk to Dead Domain about, huh? We can talk about what it's like to be non-binary and like... Uh how weird it is when you start to get misgendered the opposite direction when pe when you get to that place in your transition where people genuinely can't tell where you started as i don't know that's the thing that's the only reason why i don't have more conversations with other creators is that i don't know what to talk about with them per se do you think that jordan would want to talk to me about worst case scenario plans Sweet dream. I don't know what those are. MAD, it's, you gave me 11 of a currency that translates approximately to a dollar and 10 cents. So thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. It's going to take a minute for it to pop up on the screen because the YouTube one is really slow for some reason. Double misgendering is the most validating. They don't have, yeah. I keep getting comments recently that are like, you will never be a woman. And I'm like, lamau. And, and that also means that the other times when people successfully clock me and they're like, you know, uh, they're referring to me by my assigned gender or whatever, um, those don't hurt as much. Cause I'm like, both of you are just guessing. Like neither one of you can actually tell what's going on. You're all just guessing. Yeah, the we can always tell crowd out of again. <laughs> Sometimes I'll respond and be like, you can always tell uwu, but most of the time I just delete those comments, like regardless of which way they're going. Like when people go out of their way to call me bro or dude in a comment, I delete those because I'm like, you think I'm a trans femme and that you're misgendering me, so I'm going to get rid of it even if it's whatever to me.
Um, Eddie asks, what do you mean worst case scenario plans? Well, I, I can't speak for what Mama Mephistopheles meant when she said that. But when I talk about worst case scenario plans, I'm talking about how there is an economic projection that was made in, like, it was made 50 years ago. There were a few different economic models predicting what could happen in the future given a certain set of circumstances. And we are on track 50 years later for their model that was predicting the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario is going to lead to, you know how the economy grows every year? Well, in about 2040, if not sooner, the economy will stop growing and then it will start to collapse. And climate change is going to exacerbate food shortages because it's like, it's going to be too hot to grow stuff in certain places. Um, cattle are dying every summer because it's too hot. It's too dry in a lot of places. Um, we have to pump in a bunch of water in order to do this agriculture in these places. Um, so we're going to be dealing with widespread food shortages, increasing economic instability, increasing political instability. And if we stay on track, like basically, unless we radically change our carbon emissions, unless we radically change how we distribute economic resources, we're basically going to see the entire global population drop back down to 2 billion before the end of this century. So, yeah, basically, that's what the worst case scenario is that we are currently on track for. So when I talk about preparing for the worst case scenario, I'm talking about where do I move? that's going to not be politically persecuting me and is going to provide me with like, it's going to be climate stable relatively. Everywhere is going to continue to feel the effects of climate change. I just want some place that's going to change the least and I need to get there soon and start producing food. Like I need to start growing food. I need to start establishing greenhouses or whatever. I need to establish a way to make sure that I'm going to get water even if the local infrastructure collapses. Did you know that there are cybersecurity attacks on U on US water facilities? Like, so on top of everything else, we've got like a lack of water. Yeah, hydroponics, it would be nice to do some kind of aquaponics. Yeah, that worst case scenario, nothing will change because we are ruled by geriatric fucks that will be dead by then. Yeah, so, Things are going to change pretty dramatically. They're just not going to change in a better direction. <laughs> so I, I just focus on trying to plan for my security in the future. And I recognize that I'm really lucky that I get to make that plan. Like, I know a lot of people are going to be stuck living in apartments because they can't afford land and they, they can't afford to move, so they're going to be stuck in places where the plants that they have, even at their community garden plot, are suffering. So, yeah. I'm just doing my best to figure out how to secure my longevity, and then hopefully, if I'm producing enough food, then hopefully, like, I'll be able to give some to my neighbors. And, or maybe I'll be able to sell some at the farmer's market. I don't know, whatever. If I'm producing cheese and linen i mean i would not be producing linen but like maybe yarn or vinegar like beeswax all these different things then even if i even if the people that i know are still stuck living in their apartments then at least they have somewhere local to access a bunch of shit <laughs> so that's kind of my what happens to hrt in this scenario um, well, I assume that in places like, you know, the Pacific Northwest, like Seattle, a lot of, a lot of trans people are going to move to Seattle. I assume that in those places, there are still medicine compounding places. Um, so it should still hypothetically be produced, but there is a possibility that like, I mean, testosterone can't really be made at home. You can kind of make estrogen if you're very careful, but 
don't move to the PNW, our heat domes are becoming lethal. Look at what it did to Lytton. I mean, my plan is basically to move to probably Washington or Oregon because it is like those are the, the some of the 10, the top 10% safest counties in America. Like some of them are over there. Um, <laughs> Eric says, I nearly got arrested for taking a picture of a hydro plant in 2020. I'm just a nerd and think it's cool how it works, but apparently it's a security risk. Wow. West Coast or Great Lakes area are my go-to, but wildfire seasons are finicky. The wildfires is like the worst thing about moving up to PNW, in my opinion. Like, that's the trickiest thing. Minnesota has been mostly stable, not to mention we have LGBTQ sanctuary laws. Minnesota is great, except I'm fucking tired of extreme winters and extreme summers. Like, part of why I want to live in the PNW is because it's, it's like milder all year round. Summers aren't as hot and winters aren't as cold. I, li I grew up in the Midwest. I'm fucking over it with the 100 degree summers and then snowstorms in the winter. Like, I'm so done with it. Oh, I just realized what's up, Wendell B. I wasn't reading your name earlier. <laughs> I love my home, but the weather is already noticeably very much worse. This is what I'm dealing with in Kansas. I love being from here. I'm sad about leaving, but like, it's already so much hotter here than it normally is. This winter was like the warmest it's been maybe ever in my lifetime. Dude, recently someone on my channel was like, I thought that you were 19. And I'm like, I literally just turned 30. <laughs> Trans people with our eternal youth. Just, uh, I'm gonna be a baby forever. I say, and as I put my face down like that, you could just suddenly see the depth of this patch under my eye. <laughs> oh, no. Wonder if there will be a moment soon where gender is no more a question. Wouldn't that be fucking great? I genuinely, like, I would like to think about it less. I have other things to do. It's okay, the older you get, the hotter older people look. Listen, I already understand it. You know, I'll be watching Rhett and Link. And, like, Rhett has big dad energy. And he's like 45 or whatever, but sometimes I'll be looking at him like, that's like sexy dad energy. That's, yeah, I get it. I understand it. I found my first white hair after my 30th birthday. I found my first white hair when I was like 24 and I'm getting more of them, but most of them are on the sides, which kind of sucks because I always shave the sides of my head, so it'll be harder to see them. But like, I definitely have some up top here in the front as well. Whoop, is that one? I think I found one. I'm excited. I like it when I can see my white hairs. Rhett has always had that energy. Yes, but I didn't used to think it was sexy. That's the difference. Of course, Rhett has always had that energy. The entire time he's been a YouTuber, he's been a dad with dad energy. But it's like, I just didn't recognize it as sexy until recently. I was 14 when I found a gray hair. Fuck that. Oh my god. I feel like if you found your first gray hair in your 30s, it's a signal that you're a late bloomer. <laughs> oh no. C 
Canonically Trans. That's a great name. Welcome in. Okay, well, we should start talking about the news now, okay? We might get to 100 likes before I even can talk about the news. Wouldn't that be wild? I appreciate that you all will stick around and just listen to me talk about fucking whatever for an hour and a half before I decide I'm ready to talk about the actual topics for today. Of course there's news. There's always news. I know, it's so sad, isn't it? Hey, you know what? If you want to cancel the news, you can always cancel the news by filling out the dono goal. If you can manage, listen, if someone donates $100 right now, I will not talk about the news. <laughs> and we'll just fuck around for the next two hours. <clears throat> Is there a good news? Um, not really. <laughs> Sorry. Not really this time. TBH, I just want more PZ drama coverage. Is it, oh, I just, there isn't more, there's no more for me to say. I mean, I understand, kind of. Like, it's a train wreck and it's hard to stop looking away. And uh, a lot of the other people who've covered their nonsense are either super transphobic or super ableist. And so, you know, bam, listen. <laughs> the way that YouTube chats work, I'm not going to get that $100 until next month, but I'll fucking take it anyway. You've, you've vetoed the news. Jackie Sins in the YouTube chat has vetoed the news for today. Just canceled. Cancelled. I guess, I guess we're not talking about the news today. It's been cancelled. But I am gonna flex my muscles. Ooh, you get to see this cute shirt that I got recently. Ah, uh, can't believe the news is cancelled. What a bummer. If only we could do that IRL. I'm just gonna, yeah, let me just, just send a hundred dollars to fox news and have them stop do just don't do the news for today just cancel cancel bill o'reilly's segment for today i know that he doesn't work there anymore still man dang <laughs> that means i'm gonna have to space out videos so that they can cover into next week Ugh. Ugh. okay off my head here. Oh my god. Cancel culture used for good. I know. Okay. Well, here, now you get to see this adorable crop top that I got at the store recently. Man, it's got weird lines that sh they show up real funny on camera. Anyway. News is canceled! No more news! <laughs> Crushing the news! Smashing the news! No more news! <laughs> I'm gonna have to change the stream title to canceled news. Yeah, fuck the news. True. Yay. Yeah, the back muscles are gonna get bigger though, since I'm doing archery now. Video encoding go burr. Yeah, true, 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 true. Ah. Muscles. Aren't we having fun? Okay, I'll have to put my hoodie back on in a minute to try to cancel. Oh shit, you're low-key ripped. Oh damn, my back muscle is way bigger than I realized it was. I, it's on a little bit of a delay. I didn't realize how big my... <laughs> I didn't realize how big my back was. Okay. <laughs> yeah, back muscles go burr. I didn't realize they were that big. Yes, Lux flexes. That's what I do when we hit the dono goal on stream, so. That's impressive lat width. Man, yeah, I'm so, I'm into it. If you feel encouraged to go work out, then I am weaponizing my influencer status for good. Weaponizing influencer status for good. Okay. Wow, look at that hoodie. What an amazing hoodie. 
Make sure you keep the strength even on both sides. Yeah, I am. Um, I'm going to be getting back to weightlifting in a bit. <laughs> YouTube armpits, no news. True. <laughs> armpits. Um, yeah, I, I'm not weightlifting right now. Right now I'm doing cardio. I'm, I'm cutting right now. So, um, I'm going to start, basically I'm just trying to hit a specific goal weight. So I'll switch back to lifting later, but I, you know, when I'm lifting, I do lat pulls, these guys, and that's all, that's all in the back. So that's, that's where those lats came from. I'm, it's like rowing, the row machine. Yeah, I love this crop top. It's super, it's cute and it's comfy. It's adorable. Okay, where'd my chat go? Come back. I've been meaning to get weights since like fall of last year. You can still do calisthenics, Windleby. Like if you don't have the means to get weights and do weightlifting, um, I, what I would recommend is getting the hybrid calisthenics app on your phone. And that is going to start you with, like, wall push-ups. And, like, these, like, partial and assisted forms. So instead of going straight to, oh, now you're expected to do pull-ups. Okay, well, you start with basically, like, almost lateral pull-ups where you just grab, like, a door jam. And then you just bring the, yourself closer to the door jam. And you start really low weight, really high repetition and kind of keep going. So it's like, you can do a lot of stuff at home. I've got a rowing resistant band. Ooh, yes. That would be good stuff. I'm jelly of those back muscles. Listen, I am Privileged enough that I can afford to go to the gym. I can afford like a like an eleven dollars a month or whatever, ten, twelve dollars a month to go to the gym. <clears throat> and I'm grateful that I can afford that. I budget for that. There's probably other stuff that I might want that I don't get, but you know, for only ten bucks a month, I'm like not sacrificing a lot. One day, I want to rock your same hairstyle. It's very punk. I don't think you want to rock exactly my same hairstyle because my hairstyle is goofy AF. You see this hair back here? This hair back here is only like five inches long. <laughs> oh, man. It's goofy. Ooh, my health insurance covers my gym membership. I wish that there were more health insurances that would do that. Like if I'm paying you fucking $300 a month anyway... Yeah, resistant bands are pretty cheap. Goofy maybe, but absolutely pog in my mind. I do plan on growing out the back of my hair. That's why it is the way that it is. So eventually it will all be one cohesive thing from front to back. Shaved on both sides. Eventually. My hair is so freaking healthy right now. I showered today and like, man, my hair is so freaking moist. And full of protein. Isn't that great? I want eventually I want to do like some kind of styles that are like kind of tall, but then still bring the hair back. I don't know. How do I make that look not shitty? And like how does it how do I get it to stay together with just exactly this kind of amount of height and shape? <laughs> I stole Lux's haircut and piercings, and I get hella bitches. <laughs> I mean, all right. <laughs> Whatever works. Okay, I gotta put over here that I've, um... News is cancelled. Sad face. Now that's the new title of the stream. News is cancelled. Sad face. 
just need to get into the routine again was easier when I was helping someone else do it regularly, but I'm just too lazy and spacey. I just do it in the morning. I do, I go to the gym in the morning before I have the opportunity to develop a sense that I don't want to do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, take advantage of myself in the morning. Garnier Fructis Sleek and Shine Anti-Frizz Serum. I, right now I'm just using, today I just did like a co-wash and then I used the same conditioner, like a normal conditioner. And then I did curl cream and that was it for today. So my hair is a lot less wavy than it normally would be if I go through and do gel and style and everything, but it's looking real healthy. So no complaints from me. We don't look alike at all. My hair is different now too, but the point stands. <laughs> You'll listen, I, listen, if you need a look in order to get dates, I'm not using my look to get dates. I'm married monogamously. So if you want to steal my look in order for you to get bitches, I'm so down for it. I'm so here for it. My wife brought me cherry pie. Oh my God. Listen, I haven't eaten. Let's, we're not doing food talk. Okay. I did eat before stream, but not soon enough, like not early enough before stream, like I did it earlier in the day and I should have eaten right before stream. So we're not talking about food. <laughs> no, I'm gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I don't have any authority over you. Oh no. I just realized that if you all start just talking about something in the chat and ignore me, I don't have any power to stop you. My hair is more like a mohawk. People keep saying that my hair is going to be like a mohawk. And I'm like, how? Just because I'm shaving it on both sides. This is too thin. It's too skinny. I mean, like a mohawk would be skinnier is what I'm trying to say. Like my hair is too big. The perils of an anarchist system. Food talk. Bring back the news. Okay, well, here you go. If we get another $100 dono. I'll bring the news back. Is somebody going to cancel Jackie's cancellation of the news? I, I, until then, I have to obey the cancellation of the news. I set the conditions. News canceled due to Luxander's gun show. I think it's so funny to like flex in my hoodie. I just, it just, this hoodie is so like fluffy. It's like, it's so big, you know, it's a medium and it's so cozy. Just really, really comfy. I'm glad that it's high quality that I can actually be like, wow, I love it so much. It has like one, yeah, it has like a little bit of a loose stitch right there, but that's nothing that I couldn't fix. Excuse me. Oh my God. I boy mode too much. I don't even know what to call what I am anymore. I'm a femboy. Do you have kinks to your merch? Not yet, but there are some links. <laughs> There's a link in the description. If you look at the link, it's, it should say like merch by merch. And there's a link down there. For those of you who want to get yourself something. If there's anybody who wants to get me something, I did just add a shit ton of stuff to my throne wish list. Because some of the stuff that I had on there previously was... Um, just unavailable. So someone tried to buy me some stuff from my throne wish list and it, they couldn't because that stuff was not available. My mistake. <laughs> I like the notebook. Yeah, it's so cute. Um, I want to get one of the mugs. I still need to get my own mug because right now I just, I'm using whatever mugs I have around my house and it would be convenient if I was like, 
sipping from the Luxander mug. If there's ever any designs or stuff that you think that I should add, feel free to recommend. I might add it. Oh, someone was asking um, for a zip up hoodie and now there is one and it costs the same as the regular hoodie. So you can choose either the pullover with the big giant symbol on it or a zip up hoodie and the symbol is just over here on the breast. I have a book recommendation with a monstrously long title. It's called The Art of Reading Nature's Signs. Use outdoor clues to find your way, predict the weather, locate water, track animals, and other forgotten skills. Natural navigation. <laughs> okay, that's a book recommendation. Okay, let me add it to the list. Um, The Lost Art of Reading Nature's Signs. Okay, cool. I pulled up the link. I'll add it to my wish list later. Pullovers annihilate my hair with static. I know. I'm like, I'm like, I'll like grab my hair and like do this to get it in and out of my hoodie. I'm like, please don't get frizzy. That's why I started doing a whole curly hair routine, by the way, is that my hair is just it's so it gets really dry and then it gets so poofy and like it's actually fairly kind of poofy today because I let it dry differently than I've been doing recently but um yeah I started doing a curly hair routine because my hair is wavy and if it doesn't wave then it fucking gets poofy I I want to be a boy girl thing that makes everyone attracted to me feel gay it's kind of nice that I only have to worry about one person finding me attractive. Because, like, the last time I was trying to date, I looked really masculine because I was trying to look really masculine. But when I'm in a relationship, I am much more of, like, the feminine energy partner. And so I had someone who wanted to date me and they were thinking of me as their boyfriend. And I was like, eh. <laughs> like, that is not correct. <laughs> I am also not a girlfriend, but <laughs> eh. I want to buy some of the gothic punk stuff. I know there's actually a lot of cool punk shit on Throne, <clears throat> but I don't know if you can buy stuff from there regularly or if you have to do it. Um, like if you can only be a creator to get stuff off of Throne. Can you tell us the secret behind the fact that your hair is so long, strong, <laughs> glitter, and beautiful? Okay, my hair right now, this part on the bottom has been colored, so it's kind of damaged. But I just stopped using shampoo, so I only use conditioner. I use conditioner to do, like, I use conditioner as though I'm shampooing to get stuff off my scalp. And then I rinse it all out, and then I shampoo all of my hair. And then I put it up in a clip and I leave it there while I'm washing my body. And then I rinse it. And then when I get out of the shower, I put on curl cream, which is a protein treatment. And I don't use a towel to dry my hair. I plop my hair into a t-shirt. So plopping is you just kind of like take all of it and plop, plop it into a t-shirt and then wrap your head with a t-shirt. And then after that, most of the time, I dry it with a diffuser and no heat with a blow dryer with a diffuser and no heat. Um, and yeah, it's fucking time consuming, <laughs> but my hair is shiny and soft. And when I, when it does waves, it really does waves now. So that's pretty exciting to me. I'm hair mogging chat. Anyway, okay, so if we're skipping the news, I have to fill the time for at least one more hour. So what are we going to talk about? What are some things we're going to talk about if we're not talking about politics? I'm not going to end stream before 7. So we have until 7 to talk about whatever. Unless someone donates another $100 and then I'll talk about the news again. <laughs> Yetus that fetus wants to talk about food? No. No news, I missed the memo. Yeah, someone, I I said, 
I said if someone donated $100, then I would not do the news today, and a YouTube chatter donated $100. <laughs> Fashion autism. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna get- am I gonna get on Vash's fashion art- arc thing? My approach is totally different because my body type is totally different from Fosh's. Like, what I've realized, here's my fashion hot takes, is that high-waisted pants are the best. Like, high-waisted pants are amazing. And I'm getting more into crop tops. Because if you're wearing high-waisted pants, then crop tops, like the regular length shirts, don't really look as good. So... That's my hot take about fashion. Fishnets with everything. Oh my god, listen. <laughs> if you go look at my throne wish list, you'll see that my desire is basically to just dress goth all the time. I'm either going to be dressing like an outdoorsman, because I'm going to be going, doing archery, hunting, foraging, like maintaining my garden, all that bullshit. And then um, all the time that I spend indoors is just going to be like goth fishnet bullshit. He said some shit about sundresses on a recent stream that almost set me off. What did he say about sundresses? Is he bad talking sundresses? I'm gonna lose it. Sundresses are amazing. I love sundresses. They're my favorite. We might have a different definition of what sundress means, I guess, because there are certain styles of dresses that I'm like, they suck ass. But like, the the cute retro style sundresses, with they, they have the really short waist. And then they kind of puff out and you can wear a petticoat underneath them. And like, in particular for me, because I have such broad shoulders, the ones that look the best are the halter top ones that kind of, they tie around the neck and then come down this way. Those are the ones that I think look the best on me. Sundresses! I know I'm the last person on earth, but low rise pants are the only way. I don't like stuff squishing my tummy. Like it, for me, it's much more uncomfortable having my lower organs squished. But I have, like, an entire uterus down there, as far as I know. So, you know, that might be why it's so uncomfortable. Like, the the um, the um leggings that I'm wearing right now, they come all the way up here. Like, this is, this is the bone of my hip, and they come all the way up here. Which is, like, above the part of my belly that's squishy. I know, sundresses are the best! Did Vosh... Talk bad about sundresses? He said that they were boring, I believe, but he must have seen only trad cons wearing them. Okay, fair enough. The sundresses that I wear are, like, really colorful. They have nice designs on them. They have a cute, like, aesthetic. And then you can also wear... A nice thing to do with, like, a nice, bright, colorful sundress is to then put your fishnet leggings on <laughs> underneath. So there's this, like... It's almost like this nice trad wife top like i'm so like oh I, it's so i'm so sweet and innocent and then you're fucking you just see it peeking out of the bottom like those fishnets you've got something kinky going on Yeah, the love for sundresses that burns so bright, it burns the Vosh bridge. I, I can't be friends with someone. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight face. I can't be friends with someone who doesn't like sundresses. It's not true. I don't care whether Vosh likes sundresses or not. He's missing out if he doesn't like them. I got this really cute lilac print dress I can't wait to try out when it gets hotter. I know! We're so close to sundress season! It's gonna be like... 50 degrees this week for me, so it's not sundress season yet. I, you know what? Here, one of the things that's on my throne wish list that I would really love for someone to get for me is like, like they look like tights, but they're actually leggings. And I want them so that I can dress like a slut when it's cold <laughs> and have it look like I'm wearing tights. I've got a Hot Topic black sunflower dress. I miss Hot Topic. 
I haven't been to a Hot Topic in years. Oh my god. It's been forever. Oh my gosh, dude. Fifty degrees is perfect shorts weather. I mean, if I was wearing cargo shorts and like a hoodie, that would probably be okay. But the dress, the dress. Unless I have fleece leggings, that's the struggle. Ooh, we're so close to a hundred likes on a stream where we have not talked about any politics today. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, someone said earlier that they wanted more Poppy and Xena drama. And, but yeah, it's like, so what I was going to say is, I feel like I just switched over to Twitter and it reminded me of them. <laughs> um, what else is there to say at this point? You know what I mean? After we comprehensively went over all the different allegations, and I recognized that there were things that I didn't touch on at all, I saw some people in the comments of that video pointing out other situations that we didn't even talk about. Um, later, Vivi, have fun. But yeah, um, it's just like they lost their, like, Poppy lost her job and they got kicked off of the White Leaf Network. Like, what else is there? They didn't even have 10,000 subscribers. Or at least they don't. Like, maybe they had just... I think they had just gotten over 10,000 subscribers and then lost them. And, like, you know, I think of myself as a small-time creator. But I... Like, my channel was three times bigger than theirs. So it's like, I don't know what drama there is left to talk about. I had no idea who they were before your stream. Yeah. They're just influential enough that I felt the need to talk about it. But in the grand scheme, like... There's just nothing else. I don't think there's anything else that they could do that would be newsworthy at this point. I don't know. That's just my opinion. Cargo shorts with the Pokemon shirt <laughs> and obnoxious vest. I, I didn't have... I didn't know anyone or, or have a vest or anything. But the Pokemon shirt with cargo shorts or like a Zelda shirt with cargo shorts, that's a vibe. For sure. Hot Topic sadly evolved into a pop culture centr central. I don't want to burst your bubble, Nerdy Gardevoir, but it's called Hot Topic. So it's gonna just be whatever's popular right now. Like, the goth stuff, as much as we all felt like it was a counterculture move, it was the Hot Topic at the time. I know it's crazy. People who say they don't want to wallow in the drama and then stick to it. <laughs> like, and like, I'm not a drama channel, to be clear. You know, I think that that was, that's kind of how Poppy chose to disregard my commentary was the day that I streamed. She was like, oh, another drama channel covering or this, this drama, whatever, ah, uh, yawn. And it's like, I'm, I'm literally not a drama channel. We did talk about uh, Sophie from Mars, but it's like, it's not drama, it's abuse. <laughs> so, like, when we talk about abuse and, you know, tr holding trans women accountable and the very particular difficulties with that, like, it's not drama. I And I try to keep my content away from that. If I'm a drama channel, then PZ is a drama emporium, truly. So... You know, I feel like we said what we needed to say. It's not like I'm going to ignore it. You know, if you guys bring up Poppy and Xena, before I did my show about it, I was like, hardcore, I'm not talking about it. Like, I'm like, I will not even allude to it for the most part. But now that the cat's out of the bag, as it were, like, I'll talk about it. I'll acknowledge it. We can say, okay, well, what's been going on with this kind of stuff? Like... It seems to me in the aftermath that Poppy and Xena are, I mean, they're incapable. It's not like my stream changed that they are incapable of acknowledging their own faults, you know? So, 
I just really wanted to like get it out there to a broader audience and come from that perspective of like, I'm not going to be ableist and I'm not going to be transphobic. And we're going to try to be fairly comprehensive while not getting kind of lost in the weeds. And I feel like we succeeded at doing that. And like, I know I saw a huge Twitter profile recently. Let me see if I can find it in my mentions. I don't actually know if I will be able to find it in my mentions. I might have to do a little, little searchy search. Because... Uh, who, I don't remember who this was. There was some giant account that mentioned me in the aftermath. Let me see, where is it? Mm, come on, dude. I can't remember. It was a huge account. Verthandi. This account, okay. So, like, someone with 30,000 Twitter followers has also been involved in this Poppy and Xena situation and saw my stream and was like, wow, I didn't realize that there were so many other people that were affected by this. Um, yeah, this is dangerously close to news. It is. We're dangerously close to news at this point. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I'm just saying, like, I'm glad that I made the content because it got it to a broader audience, hopefully, and an audience of people who want to be able to hear the criticisms without all of this bad faith, transphobia and ableism bullshit. So yeah, we're edging the news right now. When Vosh said that he didn't like sundresses, he specifically referred to the formless sock styles that hang straight down from the armpits. Oh yeah, cause, like so I've seen those where it's like, it's a spaghetti strap or whatever, and then it's like, it you know, it's like here and it's flat across. It doesn't really have a neckline. It's just flat across. And then it's just like not form fitting at all and just goes straight down. Those are not enjoyable. Like sundresses, part of the point of a sundress to me is that it is like a form fitting top. And then at the waist, it flares out in some way. It's either swishy or it's got a petticoat like... That's what a sundress is to me. It's form-fitting up top, loose on the bottom. I personally wish you had exclusively made ableist criticisms. <laughs> I mean, I don't even think I could. Like, I would be... I would be being untruthful. Because I don't really believe any ableist things about them. Sundress go spinny. They do. They have flow. They've got like extra fabric around the bottoms. And then they usually are like a little bit longer than knee length. These are the things that make a sundress go spinny. Rebecca, welcome in. The news has been canceled today. We were going to talk about politics, but one person voted. <laughs> and canceled the news for everybody. Oh, gee, many Christmas. Phoebe, hello! Are there people just now coming in? Hi, everybody. We're having a nice time today. We're not talking about news. We're talking about chill stuff. Chill nonsense. Ankles revealed, I know. A hundred dollars worth of free speech. Yeah. What's up, Dream? <sighs> I love springtime. It's really great. I don't love the allergies that come with it, but I'm so I'm like, I don't like winter. I mean, I like that it's cold because I can control my temperature better, but I just, ugh, ugh. so when we get to, it's snowing right now. Honestly, a lot of the time in, uh, in a lot of the time in Kansas, it does snow a little bit, like 
in April, but I don't think it's going to this year. It's been way too warm. Are we going to be deferring the news to next stream? We'll probably have some completely different set of news next stream. I can't promise that we're carrying anything over. <laughs> like, I don't know what is going to happen, but that's one great thing about me having a politics show during this time in the world is that there is basic, I'm basically never like digging for news. Today was a little bit like, I was like, okay, there's only two topics that I want to talk about that you guys posted in the Discord server, which thank you for posting links in the Discord server. That way I know what you all want me to talk about. And then I kind of just spent like five or 10 minutes on Twitter. Like, okay, what have I retweeted this week? Like, what is on the timeline right now? What's trending right now? Um, like, the, the research part of my show takes less and less time the longer we go on because there's just constantly shit happening. So, you know, news today is probably not going to be super relevant in three days. <laughs> in three days! Oh, my lord. So we're going to defer some news to next stream, but I don't know if we're talking about it. I'm, I don't know if we're talking about the stuff that we plan to talk about today. End gender reveals, bring back ankle reveals. Off topic, but why don't you stream on Twitch? Um, it's just I, like I already had an existing YouTube channel, so it was easy for me to start streaming here. And when I first started streaming, Twitch was still kind of cracking down on channels who were using self-referential slurs and stuff. So, you know, it just was a logistical difficulty for me when I first started streaming two years ago. And I was like, well, I already have the audience built in and YouTube streaming is picking up steam. So that it's just, that's what worked for me. And I don't feel like I've lost much. Just kind of focusing on growing my platform here, not worrying about the extra work that would go into like building a brand new audience from scratch on Twitch, basically. And, um, you know, streaming to two different platforms at the same time is kind of weird too. Like, I think I would have had to pay for a service to do that at the time. Like there wasn't just a built-in, and maybe for Streamlabs, I might have to pay for the pro version in order for it to do that. I'm not sure. But yeah, there is so much for me to think about already. <laughs> streaming on Twitch is just like, okay, it's an unnecessary on top of everything else. I'm like among one of the, like some of the more successful streamers on YouTube, considering that people stream and then they're like having a hard time getting their first 10 people. It's so, it was pretty easy for me to just start. Restream.io will stream to two different services for free, but beyond that, it costs money. Does it do so without a watermark? Because I thought that um, I thought that one of the things about Restream.io, Monday's video is doing real good. Yeah, it's doing pretty good. I was almost kind of worried that people would assume that it was an April Fool's joke and that they wouldn't <laughs> click into it. But yeah, it's doing super good. The whole channel is doing super good right now. Regular OBS can multi-stream. I have to use Streamlabs OBS because of the integrations with my website. Okay, you can do restream without watermarks. Okay. I mean, maybe I'll look into it at some point. Like, it's good to diversify, but it's just hasn't, it so far hasn't been necessary for me. Kind of glad there's no news today, as I'm not sure I want to know what Trump's been saying. I did have one Trump thing, and we're not talking about it now. Ha 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 ha. Success. Is there something we could talk about as like a, I can put this on the channel, even if it technically isn't a segment, like it's not a politics thing? No Trump things, I'm so tired. Yeah. Yeah, thanks to Jackie, we've canceled the news. Good grief. I recognize the fact that we do need to just not talk about the news sometimes. 
I feel like every couple of months, every two or three months or so, I do one of these shows that are just aggressively not talking about the news. I can tell you about a fun game that I've been playing. I'm, ooh, I could show you a fun game that I've been playing. It's called Carrion. And it's a reverse horror game. Where you play, like, an um, alien or something. <laughs> yeah, we're doing the opposite of Cody's Shody and do some less news. Some less news. Oh, I don't have my headphones. I left them in the other room. Carrion always looked cool. Yeah, so I'm already a little ways into it. But, uh, okay, I'm gonna actually just turn the sound completely off for now. Just to make sure there's no shenanigans. I'm just gonna turn the v music volume off. Okay, so check this out. Luxander's meander, true. Okay, so yeah, this is this is him. And he really messes stuff up a lot. He, that's like his whole deal is like killing people, messing stuff up a lot. I've already been playing this game for a while, so I've unlocked like some of the oh, that guy has a pretty powerful nasty gun. So if I go up there, they will shoot me. Wee! No! Whoa! Oh, this guy just ended up in the water. I'm gonna eat it. Oh, they set me on fire, and it made me get small. I'm gonna eat this guy, too. Whoa. I don't really care about my progress right now. I'm just having fun. Okay, this guy fell in the water. It turns out when they fall in the water, that's just immediate death, and I can eat them and heal a little bit, okay? They tried to kill me with fire again. Oh, you can't get me, guys. I'm in the water. You can't do it. Whoop. Oh, I should turn, like, invisible. I think I have the ability to turn invisible right quick. Okay. Oh no! They killed me with fire. Because this thing was making me look down. Okay, there we go. Now I can get in here. So, it's just, it's a really fun... Because you can, like, reach around corners and stuff. Oh, I can't get through here now because I need to be big enough to hit that. Okay, anyway, I just kind of wanted to show off this a tiny bit. Because it's pretty cute. Reverse horror Metroidvania. Yeah, that's pretty much an accurate description. I need to go get more mass. I need to become more massive. Give me the save. It's like, what if you were the blob and the thing combined? Kind of, yeah. It's not a super long game. It doesn't... You know, it's like not super long, but also I feel like... For a game that I spent, like, less than $10 on, on sale or whatever, I was expecting it to be, like, way shorter. But, uh, just, it's taking a little bit longer than I was hoping, and that means that I'm getting more out of it than I was expecting, and that's nice. Okay, now I'm gonna hit that. Okay, cool. We're having fun. It's like a little- yeah, it's a Metroidvania kind of puzzle game type thing. Oh, he's shooting me. I would like to grab him. I want to grab his little ankles. I gotta- you gotta like wait for them to walk around. Hopefully you don't drop in views because of, <laughs> because of spaghetti period guy. Listen. We're not doing this for very long. I just wanted to do it long enough to show the horror element of it. Just the fact that I'm sitting here lying in wait and like he's going to he's going to creep close enough at some point. Oh, maybe he's not. Maybe he's specifically not going to creep close enough. But I'm like reaching around corners and grabbing guys. Oh, yeah, I can't get him. Turn your back, dude. Come on. I want to get you. Yes. Okay, see? That's why it's fun. And you can, like, yeah, I'm, like, ripping off the grate and stuff.
it's just too fun. Okay, I haven't saved. Doesn't really matter. I'm just... I was only showing it off anyway. <sighs> so that's a fun game that I've been playing. <laughs> What's up, Crease? Purchasing indie games is practice. Yeah, bulking season? Oh, for me, it's cutting season right now. I'm trying to get down to a certain weight. I like it when you kill the guys that are too chewy and you just shake them around. They're wearing, like, a protective suit or something. The regular guys, you just eat them. But the ones, um, in the weird suit, like, I think you get less health from eating them. And then, yeah, their bodies just kind of stay and flop around instead of getting consumed by you. Excuse me. I played Carrion on release. Lots of fun. Yeah, I've been really enjoying it. There was the spring sale recently, and I decided to go ahead and basically spend, like, 20 bucks. I spent, like, less than 20 bucks, and I got three games, and I ended up refunding one of them because it was just not what I was expecting. It was not the kind of game that I wanted to play. <laughs> um, and I also bought myself Death's Door, which was, uh, is a lot of fun. I haven't played it as much as I've played Carrion, because Carrion is great, but Death's Door, also very fun. And then my partner got me Hollow Knight off my wish list, so I know that Hollow Knight is difficult, and I'm going into it expecting it to be difficult. Yeah, there's not enough games that let you be a goop monster. Yeah, I know everybody really loves Hollow Knight. It's it's like a really highly recommended but very hard game. Yeah, and that's after about a month of me just absolutely cracking out on Stardew Valley right before <laughs> the new update. So the new update came out for Stardew Valley. And I'm like, Meh, I'll get around to it eventually. <laughs> there, there, there's a new farm and like a whole new couple of holidays and stuff and I just haven't gotten around to it. I got my previous, like, the just other file that I've started and then cracked out for a month and a half. Um, I had just gotten to doing, like, the Ginger Island stuff. So I'm not even finished, really, doing everything that I can do on that file. And so I'm like, oh, am I going to start a new one on a brand new farm? Do you play any Resident Evil games? I don't. I have not played any Resident Evil games. I used to watch... When my mom would play it on the PlayStation 1, I want to say. It's worth taking your time with Hollow Knight, for sure. I'm not planning on trying to rush through it at all. I was playing Hades for a bit, and then I kept not doing very well at Hades, and I'm like, fuck. So I don't really want to play it that much now. Even though I was enjoying all the little lore and stuff, it's just like, meh. It's hard to enjoy a game that you keep losing at. <laughs> My sister's been playing Bully Scholarship Edition again. I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, Hollow Knight bugs. More bugs? Are you sure you want more bugs? They're a little bit less active than they were earlier because earlier I had poured a bunch of water in there <laughs> right before the stream. So they were like running around. Resident Evil Revelations on the 3DS. I had no idea that there was um, a Resident Evil game on the 3DS. Is that a pepper or a tomato? It's a pepper. It's a red bell pepper top. They don't seem to care about it very much, honestly. They're not a huge fan of it. They're like, whatever, this has mostly water and apparently very little nutritional benefit. They just don't want it. Oh, it's a nightshade, isn't it? Aren't peppers... Wait. Are peppers... Are peppers nightshades? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe they're not into nightshades. I don't know. I've never tried to give them tomato before. They ate eggplant when I gave them eggplant. Because to tomatoes, eggplants, potatoes, and peppers are apparently all nightshades. And so is tobacco. Cool. Um, If those are horror games, I mostly don't play them. Until Dawn, The Quarry, Dark Pictures Anthology. I don't really play horror games or watch horror movies that much. I'm 
trying to go back and finish Final Fantasy VII Rebirth now. Got distracted for a couple weeks. Yo, I still haven't finished um, Breath of... No, 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 no. Tears of the Kingdom? I still have yet to, to finish Tears of the Kingdom. I got all the way to the place where the castle stuff is happening underground. And I got to the Lionel and I was like, oh man, I've, I haven't killed any Lionels yet in this game. And I didn't want my very first Lionel that I killed to be the one under the castle. So I still, I have not beaten that game. <laughs> Breath of the Kingdom. I'm right at the end of tears. Yeah, no spoilers. I, I haven't, I've only gotten down to the underground place where the castle stuff is. And then you're supposed to kill all these mobs. I have not gotten there. Lionels in the depths might be more difficult. Yeah. I have a big problem with finishing games. I'm so good at starting things. I'm not good at finishing them. The struggle is so real. It's like the potential is there for me to go back and do it. I just need to go and sit down in my little special cushion corner that I've created and just play a stupid game for an hour and finish it. But yeah, I don't know. Now, right this second when I have free time, I've been working on this monstrously huge mandala that I've had to redo these last three rows on it, like, three times, so... Ah, the struggle, the struggle, the struggle. Anyway, that's gonna be, like, a meter big. If I... Listen, if I made a giant sun mandala, and it's gonna be, like, a meter big, so it's, like, when it's finished, it's gonna be, like... I don't even know, huge, like three or four feet big. I honestly would, I would charge like $900 if I sold that bitch. <laughs> I don't know that it literally took 900 hours worth of labor, but man, that would not be inexpensive. I'm really bad at finding the Yiga clan hideouts. I'm really good at finding them by accident when I'm not ready to <laughs> deal with that yet. I had a tradition of playing X3 Reunion until it ground my CPU to a halt and then picking it up on my next computer upgrade, rinse and repeat. I finally lost the save after nine years though. Yeah. I'm about due for another computer upgrade. I definitely need a new video card and I probably should do the whole motherboard CPU bullshit, but... Probably the video card first. I don't know, man. It's cool that I've been playing some games recently because um, I kind of was just really out of the habit for a long time. I used to play a lot of city builders, and then I decided that those fucking are not very fun. Um, and I have a ton of them, and I kept trying different ones, and I'm like, it's not fun. But... Um, yeah, so now that I'm getting back into games, I'm enjoying a little bit more these kind of, like, Metroidvanias and these, you know, dodge and roll kind of games. Like, don't, um, fuck. Death's Door is, you know, like, you have to dodge and you have to shoot and you have to, you know, you have to refill your ranged attack by using your melee attack. And, you know, that kind of stuff is kind of enjoyable to me right now. Oh yeah, I'm sure my PSU can handle it. My PSU is much bigger than I need it to be. Never played Castlevania. I hear good things though. And I mean, of course, Metroidvania is named after Castlevania. So those that style of game, for sure. The absolute chaos of The Sims 4. I didn't realize I got the Supernatural pack on top of the werewolves, so both parents were in beast mode while the babies needed a nanny, so at this point I'm just gonna age them both up. And the house is haunted too. That's fun. That's fun stuff. Guacamelee 1 and 2 are wonderfully run uh, Metroidvania platforms. Platformers. Cool, yeah, no, I'm not familiar with those. I was, yeah, it, I just was not having very much fun playing video games for a little while. So it's kind of nice that, oh, you know, yeah, I can spend ultimately like 
twelve dollars <laughs> for two games that are actually I'm I'm spending a good amount of time playing them and I'm enjoying them. I wish that I could just play World of Warcraft without there being a goddamn monthly fee. That's really like if I could just kill five hours a week on WoW, I would be probably pretty happy. But no, it has to be twenty dollars a month. Guacamole is beautiful, but the cringe time capsule of old memes immortalized. My wife priced all the XP packs for Sims 4, and it's like a thousand bucks. I didn't realize that the Sims had like a buy stuff program. Why? What hap whatever happened to just buying a game and it's finished when you buy it, and there's not a bunch of downloadable stuff? You can pay your sub with gold. I know the amount of time. Listen. But I want to enjoy playing when I like someone gave me Violet here in chat. I don't know if she's here today. Gave me like a couple of months of time in WoW. It was a really nice gift. And they were telling me like, okay, here's some things you can do. Some of the stuff that they were telling me I could do is like, oh, if you sell this one pet you have, it's worth a lot. And I went and looked at which pet it was. And I'm like, oh, you mean that pet that I got from doing like a fuck ton of fishing like no i'm not gonna get rid of that off of my account it's nostalgic it's like I, I, it's worth something to me but like so the kind of stuff that you have to do in order to make enough money to uh, purchase your sub with gold it's like i want to actually enjoy my time playing the reason why i stopped playing wow was that ultimately is that it felt like an obligation I was like, I'm paying $15 a month, so it feels like I have to play it in order to earn that time. And so it would be making that problem even worse if I was like, I have to earn enough gold in the game in order to be able to afford playing the game. Like it just, oh, it's the worst. I, it would be so much more fun if I didn't feel obligated to play it when I had a subscription. I was into Gaia Online when I was really little. If being a tycoon is your playstyle, you can easily sustain free play, but if you just want to play, nah, it's bad. I'm an altaholic. I go, like, dick around and I'm like, ooh, I want to quest in this place. I want to level this character. Sometimes I'll play at max level, like, if I have someone to play with, but I'm I'm into, like... Just running around and experiencing the world. I know they're so easy to hate, but have you played any cookie clickers? I have played a cookie clicker. I was playing... I There was this game called Best Fiends, which is not a cookie clicker. It's a puzzle game. But they had a cookie clicker like side game that was best fiends branded and the fun thing about clickers is that on your phone you can kind of go like and click on your phone and you're getting like a number of clicks all at once but yeah the mmo that almost got me off wow was the star wars one and i know that's free to play yeah swotor <sighs> I just don't like Star Wars that much. I mean, it's fine, but it's like the skin, the aesthetic of it does matter somewhat. So Guild Wars 2 did almost get me off WoW, but the PvP sucked ass. That's the... <laughs> I just... My partner and I have talked about it before, and it would be great if you could just have, like, just the, just the PvP part of WoW. But it's like, yeah, the version of PvP that we like and remember is from... 12 years ago, and who knows what the hell balance changes have happened. Actually, you know what? Here's part of the main reason why I quit WoW. So it, it started to feel like an obligation, and they temporarily ruined my PvP strats for a bit because I was a balanced druid. Like, I was a spellcaster DPS druid, and 
the there was like a point where they changed the talent point system or whatever so that you had to choose between either cyclone cyclone is like it spins you up and you are stuck there for like six seconds with diminishing returns um and like you can't spells can't be cast on you when you're in it or whatever i can't remember what the exact provisions were but there was that which is a really important pvp move and then also typhoon which for me was a pvp move that i used constantly and it all it is it's an area of effect it does not require you to target anything and you just push air out in a cone in front of you it was amazing it was good for catching out rogues and dru druids who are in stealth it's good for pushing people off of edges of stuff. It's good for increasing the distance between yourself because I'm a fucking, I'm a caster. And I don't have like crazy great armor. Mm. I left WoW because of the community was pretty toxic and I hated having to buy a new device after each forced expansion. Oh, like having to upgrade your computer to deal with the cartoon graphics for some reason, taking up giga giga bits on your computer. You can get them both now, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I know. <laughs> I have played more recently, and they fixed it, because I literally quit the game over that shit. I'm <laughs> like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I was I was so mad. <laughs> it's just really funny. I'm like, I'm, I'm like feeling this emotional experience that I had literally like 12 years ago. I'm like, I can't fucking believe you ruined my PvP. <laughs> I'm so mad. <laughs> Oh boy. And then it's never going to be the same, you know? Like, it's never... They keep changing stuff. Even if they keep rebalancing, they keep tweaking. Uh, it's the kind of thing that I feel like you can really only enjoy and appreciate if you've been playing with some amount of continuity through the years. I'm like five expansions removed from when I was playing the game. So, it's real different now. Been back at Secret World Legends again. It's so good and so bad. And uh, really impressive. Buggy and broken and terrible with mechanics, but the core concept, storytelling, and world building are so far beyond the rest. I haven't heard of that one. It sounds fun. I've been playing a warrior since vanilla beta. I love the punishment. <laughs> a warrior. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I guess that was one of the, like, four classes you could choose from in the vanilla beta. Oh my god, that's crazy. I was never into the PvP experience, but I got tired of how complicated they made the rating stuff. It feels like you need external mods to function. Yeah, the more recent mo um, raid stuff when I quit was getting a little bit complicated. Um... But, yeah, part of the reason why my partner ended up quitting playing was that um, we both had, like, been grinding for PvP gear, and I think that he had just completed a PvP set, and then they did a patch, and they made all of the raid gear that you get basically better than the PvP gear. Like, you could go and do a casual pickup group raid and get gear that was better than, like, the PvP gear you have to really work your ass off to get. And it was like, god damn it. I still, you, just made it so fucking annoying for a bit there. Yeah, life has enough changing inconsistencies. Please let my games be a stable getaway. Yeah, don't change the entire thing. For one, like, j just, like, I want my game to be a, like, I want to be able to go back to that same place. When I load up a game, I don't want it be, to be, I don't want it to feel dramatically different. But World of Warcraft now versus 12 years ago does feel dramatically different. It has like some flavors of familiarity, but it's just not the same. I did enjoy the Mists of Pandaria though. I, I'm, I'm one of those people who I think that the, um, Shit, what's it called? Um, World of Warcraft. 
what is wrong with me? My brain is empty. I can think of all these related concepts, but not the actual- Wrath of the Lich King, <laughs> that one. Um, Wrath of the Lich King, in my opinion, is still the best era of World of Warcraft. Cataclysm was cool, Mists of Pandaria was cool, and then I haven't really played much since then. But, I- yeah, I don't know. I just think Wrath of the Lich King was like the heyday of WoW. Excuse me. When I was hardcore into WoW, the PvP was so- PvP gear was so good you could just use it for raiding. Opposite problem. I mean, I would still- I would sometimes wear my PvP gear in raids, and it would work. I, I would just switch out, like, my gems for, like, some extra armor or whatever. I started Mage in Vanilla, switched to Paladin in BC, and stuck mostly with that, with Temp class switches, but I had a modern Paladin healing. I don't know if I'm ever going back to it now, because I'm currently healing as Evoker. I played a Druid, primarily. That was my main. Um, Priest, Disc Priest, ooh, baby! That was one of my mains. Rogue was one of my mains. And I had a fire mage. Sometimes she was a frost mage, but a fire mage. And those were like my four that I I had at max level and I would play at max level. Evoker is, I guess, a new class that I haven't played yet. <laughs> yeah, it was so fun. It was it was good. TBC was my golden era. Wow, I didn't start playing in TBC. I do love it, though. Some of my favorite times playing WoW, because Wrath of the Lich King was, that was the most recent content, but, like, BC was still, like, you could still do stuff there and, like, grind for reputation. It was a little bit easier than playing in Northrend, but, um, yeah, I, a lot of my best memories of just enjoying playing by myself are in Outland. So, like, I have, like, pictures of my druid on some of the floating sky things in Nagrand. And it's just, there's just something so special about it in the place that it lives in my memory. And, like, the place in the past that it lives. I did love raiding in Cataclysm. I, you know, I liked raiding, I tanked on my paladin during Cataclysm. So that was pretty fun. You're a dragon as an evoker? Okay, that's cute. The DK class was pretty neat as a concept. <laughs> when I, I joined in Wrath of the Lich King, and everybody constantly shit-talked Death Knights. Everybody. Everybody constantly shit-talked Death Knights. Like, uh. <laughs> they were not very well balanced at first. We used to joke that like, oh, you know, oh, it's great. We got another DK tank. It's so easy for him. He just has to smash his face against his keyboard. Doesn't really matter what moves you do in what order. And I know that that's not true, but we would just shit talk DKs all the time. Death Knights would always tank as every spec but blood. The canonical tank spec. <laughs> oh my god. It's the kind of person who played a Death Knight, too. It's not just that the class itself sucked. It's like, the what was with- why? The kind of person who played a Death Knight was just an asshole every time. They would, like, chain pull without regard for whether the fucking healer had any mana. And they would, like, pull too big- Ugh. They were always so bad at their jobs. Now there's demon hunters. Yeah, there's so much new stuff now. I started playing shortly after retail went live. Undead Warlock. Then when TBC came out, my first guild was collapsing due to the strain of AQ40. So I started a new character as a warrior space goat. We love the space goats. I never had a space goat main. I just wasn't really into Draenei. 
like my mage well i didn't play alliance that much honestly we started on alliance but then when we re-rolled our accounts we did switch to horde i had to tell healers not to stop drinking when i would chain pull dungeons with shield wall up mm. classic classic strategies um, yeah. Let's shift off of World of Warcraft. <laughs> well, I still want to chill for another at least 20 minutes. But let's get off of the WoW talk. Other fun stuff. What are other fun things that we can do with our free time? I kind of want to learn how to make kombucha. I like I was looking at a um I was looking at maybe taking a class to do with either canning or fermenting, and then I was like, I don't really feel like I need to take a class to learn how to do either of those things. I feel like I could just learn what I need to learn without spending $50 on a class. It's like, because fermented drinks are supposed to be really good for you. I've never had kombucha though, so I feel like maybe I should get some grocery store kombucha. Kombucha is just like making beer or something like that. Well, then I already know a lot of the basics. I know how to make mead. I've never done it, but I know how conceptually to make mead. My sister used to work for a kombucha company. Kombucha company. Isn't it like very mildly alcoholic? Just like a very teeny tiny bit? Because like it's fermented. Anyway, you need a starting culture, enough sugar to feed that culture, and a sterile starting vessel. Seems pretty straightforward. There are some non-alcoholic kombuchas. Um, yeah, but it's just like a byproduct of fermentation, where you have a little bit of alcohol. Maybe they burn it off, like maybe they boil it off. I've been trying out mixology. Ooh, Jackie! I don't do fancy drinks, but I do like having a cocktail set. And I just, I'm, I'm a really, I'm a really easy bitch. And so I can just take like vodka and some fucking olive juice and just drink it. Dirtiest martini I've ever had. You got to learn about dehydrating food like tomatoes and blending them into powders. Get a vacuum sealer that attaches to mason jars and you can make things like dehydrated spaghetti and pizza sauce as well as other soup additives. Helps with quantity of storage. I was kind of thinking about um, learning how to can tomatoes at the very minimum because I am certain I'm going to have more tomatoes than I know what to do with this year since that's what I'm growing in my garden is like two different varieties of tomatoes. Wet storage is still quite bulky. Yeah. So dehydrating foods like tomatoes. I do have some basically dehydrated tomato powder. I didn't make it. And yeah, it's heavy if you move for sure. So if I just take some of the dehydrated tomato and like some onion powder and garlic powder and then like some spaghetti... Just throw it in a jar, <laughs> just a dry, pour some boiling water in there. Um, yeah, but those kind of things are fun stuff that I plan on learning, having a fun time. Ooh, I will say, so we aren't talking about the news today, but I do want to say that you should not be drinking raw milk right now because there's bird flu in the cows. So, I think, you know, you should be careful about eating any raw milk products. Mostly, they don't, we don't have them a lot in the U.S. anyway. But also, be careful with eggs, because obviously the, it's bird flu, so the eggs, most store-bought is pasteurized, I know. Most of it's pasteurized, but if you are specifically drinking raw milk, don't do it right now. And then also, if you're eating eggs, make sure that they're very well cooked. Don't do any, like, raw cookie dough or anything like that right now that might have egg in it because there's a lot of bird flu. And um, you can get it from coming in contact with it 
in something that you're eating. That can help with your spicy pepper storage too. Be very careful if you are powdering spicy stuff, wear a respirator with chemical goggles. <laughs> yeah, let me just breathe in some of this ghost pepper powder I'm making. If you have, if you're any raw cheese product, any raw milk cheese product is also, is also off limits right now, but most cheeses are made from pasteurized milk. You're usually going to have to go out of your way to find a raw milk product in the U.S., but there are some people who do it. So I'm just saying there's bird flu and there's a lot of it in the mammaries of these cows for some reason. And then with chicken as well, you want to be careful with any eggs that you're eating that they're thoroughly cooked. It, yeah, no, it's recommended that you not eat any raw milk cheese products either right now. Just to be safe. <laughs> I'm gonna be on soy milk for a while. If Listen, regular pasteurized milk from the grocery store is fine because they heat it up to a certain temperature and that kills a lot of the micro bacteria or whatever that are in there. Um, it's the raw products that you don't want to eat. Excuse me. It's like, yeah, Kitty says, I have access to raw milk products because we have a cheese factory in our town as well as several dairies nearby. But again, only rural people have that access often. Some people go out of their way to buy raw milk products. Like they go to specialty, specialty stores to get it. It's a specific dietary thing. I don't really know why. I don't understand why you would want to do that. <laughs> but, you know, it's it's some people's thing. But don't. Not allowed. Ugh, I, st I started talking about food. How dare I? I made a mistake. Started to talk about food. Considering just how many people are lactose intolerant, this feels counterintuitive. <sighs> oh man, my back in between my shoulder blades is just crazy right now. Ugh. My entire spine has just been feeling super weird the last couple of days. Stretching more. Trying to make my whole entire spine feel better. Being old is so hard. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry about how old I am. You know what I mean? The real trick is to just not like plain milk. It's, I don't know why I like it. It's got such a thickness to the texture that I know a lot of people are really put off by that, but I'm like, I want to drink whole fat milk. I really need to start doing yoga before I break in half stretching one day. It's like a combo. Yoga and stretching and both. I've just been like, my, um, my jaw has been so painful. I've been doing a lot of neck and like full spine exercises in the hopes of being able to like open and close my jaw without it hurting. Yeah, being old makes fitness no longer optional. You have to be strong to ward off the chronic injuries. I'm like, I have, I have to hold my body together with my muscular strength because my um, connective tissues don't do a very good job. <laughs> Straight up milk upsets my stomach, and I don't think that it's lactose intolerance because I have no issues with ice cream or milk chocolate. Ice cream has a ton of lactose in it, so I don't think that it's um, lactose intolerance if you can eat ice cream. I might have digestive issues from dairy, and like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shit weird for my entire life, it turns out, because apparently I'm not willing to give up dairy. Ugh. We all make our sacrifices. <sighs> A 
trying to think if there's any other fun stuff to cover today. I don't know what complicated set of keys I need to press on my dietary keyboard for a normal digestion, but it seems to have a lot of random ass triggers. You might look into FODMAPs, like the low FODMAP diet is a temporary thing where you cut out a lot of stuff and then you gradually reintroduce to figure out what your triggers are and in what amounts. So like you eliminate all these different things and then you gradually integrate um, like garlic. You might do like a tiny bit of garlic powder and then like more garlic powder and then the third day you eat raw garlic. I don't know. Um, but you're supposed to like gradually reintroduce stuff and find out what your triggers are. It takes like, it takes at least like six weeks of you being on that diet before you should start to reintroduce things. And then you have to reintroduce them one at a time and then phase them back out. And it's a long process, but FODMAPs are like, it feels like there's so many different random things like garlic, onions, dairy, even legumes you can only, you're only supposed to have in small amounts, like so many different things. So. I've basically just been like, okay, yeah, my lower gut ferments a lot of food. And that's why I have like extra gas and like weird poops. And it's like, yeah, I'm not gonna like garlic and onion. Are you fucking kidding me? Am I gonna cut out garlic and onion? Hell no. Even if I found out that those were problematic for my gut, they're healthy for you in other ways. They taste amazing. Life needs to be worth living. And that means I'm gonna eat fucking cheese and ice cream and pizza even though like these things hurt my tummy sometimes. Like I would rather have an upset tummy. Although, you know, there are some people for whom dairy like makes them bleed internally. And you know, I don't wanna downplay any of that. I don't personally have things that bad. So I'm perfectly capable of causing, if garlic and onion caused gut problems, I just couldn't eat the cuisine of my people. <laughs> are you Italian? <laughs> How do you eat enough to bulk? Getting the calories in is hard for me. Um, I was doing like really intense smoothies for a while where I would take like, I would put like peanut butter and avocado and all kinds of, and like protein powder and all kinds of extra shit. And I would eat early in the morning. You want to reduce the amount of time that you're fasting at night. So you want to, you can eat late at night and eat early in the morning and that'll help you gain weight. If you don't want to gain weight, if you want to lose weight, then you want to stop eating early in the evening and then not eat until like a little bit later in the morning or afternoon. So yeah, what time of day you eat also matters. And then yeah, getting in a lot of protein, liquid diet, you know, you can supplement with some sugary desserts or like soda or something. Obviously don't try, don't like bulk primarily with sugar and stuff, but it's just to supplement if you're having a hard time reaching your daily targets. I feel so bad for you all. I can eat anything with no repercussions. How young are you? <laughs> that tends to be a young people thing. I did protein shakes at one point to replace all my snacks. Protein shakes are good. I'm Cajun. Oh no. Beer's unironically magnificent calories for bulking. Yeah, beers. Oh, you're 36. Wow. I'm jealous of your guts, dude. Uh, what's up, Mersh? Hello. Today's meeting day. Nice. Sounds fun. I'm not bulking. I'm trying to cut right now. I'm like, I'm like, what can I eat that's gonna make me feel full but isn't gonna actually be super high calorie? The answer to that is bananas, I guess, bananas. Bananas, bananas, banana, 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 banana. I feel like I need to do at least one more cool topic for today. Ooh, yeah, I'm excited to start using um, my sewing machine more. I don't know a lot about it. Like about sewing garments, for example. Um, my mother-in-law has a bunch of 
patterns that she was considering sending me. So she's got like a ton of yarn. So my mother-in-law is a, she's a quilter. Um, I, I don't want to quilt. I have a bunch of small patch stuff that I, I was using, I was making like cloth masks a few years ago. So I know I'm like comfortable with the function of a sewing machine. I know all of the parts and like what they do. But as far as like actually how do you make clothes and what are the rules and stuff, I'm still working on learning those things. So when I get some patterns, I'm looking forward to like actually learning how to make an alter clothing. It's gonna be really fun. And I got like a heavy duty machine that can do denim and maybe even some really light leather. So make sure to overmeasure. Yeah, you wanna, if you need to cut things down, that's better than being like, oh, well, if you cut it too small, what are you gonna do? You, you like, you don't have enough fabric. Sucks to suck. Oh, geez. Yeah, crochet is my main thing. Like, that's what this is, is this is a crochet thing. And it looks kind of weird and floppy right now, but when it gets stretched fully out, it's gonna look like this, but yellow. So, I don't actually know if you can see that very well. And like, this is all crochet. This is what I mean. I'm like, this thing is like a meter big. If I sold this, it would easily be like $900. My aunt is into quilting and someone in her Facebook quilting group calculated how much a quilt is worth if they paid themselves $16 an hour for labor and quilts are worth like $900. Yeah. This quilt right here was made for me by my mother-in-law. This is the back end, like the other side is a lot more fancy. Like it's just, it's got a lot more stuff going on on the other side. Um, but I like this side better. And she's got another one that I was like, she was showing me a bunch of pictures and I was like, oh my God, I adore that. And she was like, oh, well, I'm just gonna give that one to you then. And I'm like, fucking bet, mom. So I'm actually, I was looking for another, um, another mandala pattern, hopefully a smaller one that I can make for her and give her something that's like fiber arts that was made with love and care and it has a lot of copious unnecessary detail on it. Um, Because those are the kind of things I like to do for people. That, those are the kind of gifts I like to give. If I'm going to give someone a gift, you know, obviously I'll buy some someone something if I, if it occurs to me to do that, but I want to make something for you that I think you'll appreciate and like, or I'll give someone like some cuttings from one of my plants or some of my aloe pups when my aloe occasionally puts out pups. Um, or like if I had an herb garden, I would give people sashes of herbs and I'm looking forward to having a garden so that I can give people gifts out of my garden. I just decided to start crochet, apparently. I picked it up and had it in my hand, and then that's now what I'm doing with my hands. <laughs> I'm just talking and doing crochet now. Um, yeah, and it's, it's just nice to give someone something that you grew out of your garden or that you made with your hands. I do the growing plants thing for having infinite gifts. Infinite gifts, right? I know a man who makes artistic quilts and he sells them for around $1,000 each. However, he is a known painter as well. I think he's able to get the money for the quilts because he is already well known as an artist. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like quilting, because it has this sort of scrapbook feel to it, I think it's easy for people to undervalue. Like, you know, the uh, quilting is not just the thing that you are, you know, when you look at a quilt from far away, you're seeing just like these blocks and that can be done very artistically. The blocks can be done really nicely. But what quilting actually is, is like, if you look at a quilt up close, you can see that it'll have these like shapes that are stitched into it. And that's what takes so much time. You know, if you're just stitching together some squares and triangles, okay, whatever, that doesn't take very long. But like, 
this quilt. I know that you can't see it because the details, you know, but like, I'm just going to trace some of this with my fingers. Like there's so many different shapes and I'm like just tracing that's all stitched on. So that's the thing that takes so long. <laughs> I made my wife's wedding ring at one of those blacksmithing classes. Yeah. Um, my partner and I didn't make each other's rings. It would be cool to do something like that. But we also got married like forever ago and neither one of us wears a ring anymore. So it's like, I don't really know if it's entirely necessary. But it is cool. I, and I know people who are, people who are jewelers and stuff tend to highly prize like, oh, I made it. And like, it means a lot. But then you're just adding more value to the item in terms of, oh, hope it doesn't get dropped later. Hope it doesn't fall down the garbage disposal or anything. But you can always make another one. So there's that. I have definitely seen some gorgeous quilts. At my old job, which was a library, all of the staff at the time made a quilt together which depicted the library as it looked at the time. It was hanging in the main entrance and was the coolest shit. That's so cool. I do like how a quilt can be a group project in that way. Whereas like if I'm crocheting something, literally like part of the point of crochet is that it's all one continuous thing. I guess with some crochet pieces, you, you can do it in pieces and then sew it together. But I don't like that nearly as much as I like just crocheting an object from beginning to end. Like, the sewing part of crochet sucks. Not my favorite. Library Quilting Club is the best thing I've heard all week. Libraries are amazing. I love libraries so much. Like, I, I was um, trying to figure out where to get seeds from, and I found out that some libraries have, like, seed libraries where you're allowed to go take like five packets of seeds and just for free just have them for free that's awesome that's the kind of thing that i would like to contribute to you know if i ever was like oh i know that i have way more seeds than i need for next season I'm like oh let me donate some of my tomato seeds to the to the library What do you think about trying to regrow produce from the store? Like taking a garlic clove that sprouted and trying to grow it. Um, I've seen videos about it and it works differently with different things. Like a carrot, you're basically never going to get a carrot to regrow by just replanting the top of the carrot. Um, lettuce, you can get some growth out of it sometimes. Garlic is one that you can usually get decent growth out of it if you just plant a single clove. So it's doable. It just depends. And I guess it's like easier in some ways than growing from seed. So, but it's, you're going to be getting clones is the thing. You know, you'll lose some of that hardiness of like, they're more resistant to blight if you have less of a monoculture, you know. I know I'm I'm crocheting out of frame. That has to be such a such a boner killer. The wedding ring is steel, so it's quite tough. We are thinking of making our 15 year bands this year because I have a small crucible now, and I can make it with either copper or silver. That's lit. That's cool. Yeah, silversmithing can be profitable if you're really good at it. I mean, it's another one of those things where people can buy shitty, shitty but good looking jewelry from Amazon. And so the value of a silversmith's work is not what it should be nowadays. Like I used to make jewelry and I think I would struggle to sell it well enough to recoup my losses. You know, like, okay, I was making stuff out of metal and they were smallish. At the same time that I was like, oh, I wonder if I could make a living selling jewelry, there was this other lady 
who made ceramic necklaces, I, you know, I'm, if I'm making like a pendant necklace, you know, this bitch is going to cost $60 at least, depending on what I did to it. Um, but someone else can take like literally hundreds of just pieces of clay, just, just discs of clay, stamp something into it and sell it for fucking $30. Something that's literally worth, like, maybe $5. If you considered, like, if she hand... If she handmade all of her stamps, which she did not, then you could say, okay, whatever, that's worth five bucks because you can make a shit ton of them out of that one stamp that you did over and over again. So it's like, yeah. It, it was just like, it's not going to be possible for me to make money selling a good product because other people can make shitty products and sell it for like no one's gonna buy my necklace for 60 bucks if they can buy another necklace that's like roughly as cool for like 30 bucks there's just no way like i could be undercharging and still not get what i'm worth I hate those kind of products. Yeah, making a clay product is the lowest cost mass-produced product possible due to the low cost of the starting materials. And it's like, I guess good for you for finding your grift, but like, I was really irritated by it at the time. I will literally go dig the clay myself, purify it, and make a pot, and I still want to sell it for less than what you can buy it in the store. Yeah. You'd be surprised how far the handmade label can carry you, but you're not wrong. Yeah, and I'm talking about, like, when I was doing, when I was making these calculations, that was, like, more than 10 years ago, and now the economy is what it is, and it's, like, only certain people are buying luxury items. Like, who out there is going to buy, like, if I make this, and it's, like, a huge thing, and I even attach it to, like, the tubing and get it all nice and stretched, like, is anyone going to pay what it's actually worth? I don't know. This kind of thing, actually, I think that I could probably make a decent amount of money selling mandalas, but um, I also really only have the motivation to make things that I want to make, so I'm making this one. Because I want to have a huge fuck off sun mandala to celebrate Beltana or Beltane. May Day is coming up soon. And then I'm going to make one for my mother in law because I love her. And then am I going to have literally any motivation to make a, another mandala? I'm literally in the process of making a bisexual mushroom and it's been in two pieces on my desk for like months now. <laughs> I just need to attach it and then take some pictures and sell it, but I'm not doing that. So, yeah, it's it's just hard to wrangle yourself. Like, I already have a full time job. Can I? I would I would have to feel like pivot. I feel like I would need to pivot and do crochet as my job in order for it to like not just feel like an encroachment on my free time. I hate that all people see is the price. I mean, I cannot begrudge them. I, I focus on the price of things, too. There are things, like, I would love to support independent artists, but they shit costs money, you know? If I really stick with the archery stuff, I could easily see myself, you know, going to Etsy and buying, or maybe not even Etsy, like, I'm I'm more likely to go to someone in person, like, oh, I, I do the Renaissance Festival, so I'm gonna talk to a leather worker who I actually know, or at least that I can talk to you in person and be like, okay, can I get some custom work done or, or whatever? I'll buy XYZ from you. Um, but yeah, it's tough. Like I'm not, it's like, not like I'm making a shit ton of money either to be able to pay for what it costs to really compensate an independent artist. Mm, excuse me. I used to sell cars, and I would pull my hair out at the audacity of people trying to haggle with me. Meanwhile, the prices were set in the computer. I, I think with car buying, it's a weird niche where there's an expectation that you should be able to haggle. I feel like most places, you don't really, ha like at a flea market, sure. At a garage sale, sure. 
you're invited to haggle. But it, that is interesting, because people do haggle at the car dealership. I mean, my car I got for a little bit less than the asking price because I had someone come help me um, who's bought a lot of cars and has experience with car dealerships. And that person was able to be like, well, you know, this car doesn't have XYZ um, features. So really we should knock, you should knock the price down. And then they did. So I was like, okay, cool. That was pretty lit. Oh my God, stitches. When I bought my motorcycle, the dealership had on their website and on their front door, uh, on a huge sign on the inside wall as well, saying, we don't, we won't haggle with you. Don't waste your time. Like the price is what the price is. I would be so annoyed if someone tried to haggle, haggle with me about something that I made with my hands. I'd be like, well, guess what, bitch? For you, the price just went up 20 bucks for wasting my fucking time. You want to do it again? Oh, the second time you try to haggle with me, I'm canceling your sale. Like, I'm not doing business with you. I'm blocking you, and I'm not doing business with you. Boomers thinking it's still the 80s. True. Oh, gosh. Well, I've added a little bit to my mandala. The colors are starting to change. It's gone from this, like, orangey color to this, like, yellowy color. So, that's cool. But, uh, yeah, we did some news today, except that we didn't do any news today. That was just me going on autopilot for wrapping up the show. Um, the problem is that capitalism has so many steps. A guy digs clay and sells the raw product to a bulk processor who then doubles the price to cost and sells the finished clay to a potter or pottery business. Prices then get doubled or tripled again as they are sold to a store who then doubles or triples the price. Yeah. It's the, it's the middlemen. It's crazy how, yeah, you can go and dig the clay yourself and do all this stuff. And you're looking at the product of your work going, I can't reasonably sell this for what they sell this for at the store. Like, I genuinely can't morally do it. <laughs> You'll save a lot of money buying a rich man's old Volvo parked in a garage all its life. True. The news is there are no news. That would be a scary world. If there are no news, I feel like there, the, most of humanity is dead. If there's no news. Goodness gracious. Well, you know, I appreciate everybody hanging out with me today. I just want to say, for frame of reference, like, I, I keep showing you the mandala that I'm making, like, and, you know, it's huge in my hands, like, hold on, like, it's, it's big in my hands, right? And I'm only, I'm only working right now on the third row of the petals, of these big petals, like, I'm only right here working on the third row. Can you see me? You see my mouse? I'm only working on the third row of this. And it's that huge. It's going to be jai fucking enormous. I feel stupid for asking what's the purpose of those. It's just a decorative thing. Mandala means circle, I think. And it represents like the universe. And it's something like that's associated with meditative practices. But it's there's no like purpose to it, I don't think. No specific symbology either, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, it's going to be gorge. Yes, thank you everybody for hanging out with me. Thank you to Jackie Sins for canceling the news today. We needed a chill stream. A chill convo stream. And, uh, yeah. I guess we will pick up with more news bullshit on Sunday. Interesting color choice. Oh, I just, I bought the yarn and then the idea for the mandala came after I already had the yarn. It's like supposed to be like a sun. Sand mandala are about the ephemeral nature of life and how things can disappear on a whim or a wind. Nice. <laughs> I love the no news, even if it's boring, but chill is nice. Listen, what does it take to get news today? Do you have another $100 dono? 
I will squeeze in one or two news topics if I get another hundred dollars right now. But it's the the price is steep for canceling the news. That's what uh, earlier I was like, if we get a hundred dollars, I'll cancel the news. And then Jackie Sins decided to cancel the news. If you're really, really, really committed to getting news today, I'll take another hundred dollar dono. You gotta. Okay, well, we're going to do some news now <laughs> at the end at the end of the show. Okay. Major Domo. It's fine. I'll do it even with one cent short. $99.99. What about half news? $50. Listen. Okay, so we're going to do at least a little bit of news now. Okay, what do I have open right now? Tennessee. Okay, we'll talk about Tennessee. And that's the whole news for today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just, I'll do one segment. <laughs> oh no, okay. I was about to be like, goodbye, but no. Thank you, Domo. It's, there it is, it's finally, finally showed up. Always something awful going on in Tennessee. Oh man. Okay. Let me shift my brains a little bit. Let me get back into the segment here. Tennessee. I guess we should talk about the bird flu thing too. I wonder if turning on Super Chats has helped your AdSense. I don't know. I don't think so, but it's hard to say. Hasn't the channel had more growth since you did that? I feel like it was like months ago that I, um, I switched that back on. I mean, the biggest difference is that I'm actually posting content basically every day. Like, the consistency with the upload schedule is the thing that kind of makes some of the biggest difference. But I'm not sure whether turning off Super Chats helped. Because, you know, YouTube does take, like, somewhere between 30 and 50% of the donations. So... That is one reason why um, Google sucks. $10 a video is like $300 a month. I'm only just now getting to that point. Previously, it'll be like $2 a video. <laughs> okay. We should talk about the bird flu. We've been talking about all kinds of things that are going to affect the food supply over the course of the next couple decades. You know, climate change is making areas hotter and that's making it so that, you know, things are dry and so plants are not doing as well. Less yield, sometimes entire crops dying. You also have lots of cattle dying because it's too hot during the summer. Another thing, it is not directly necessarily a result of climate change, but there is also like, okay, um, in this instance, it's bird flu. I was going to also say uh, if you have like fires, there were a lot of fires a couple summers ago. I think that that's more of a climate change related thing. But today I just kind of wanted to talk pretty briefly about the bird flu and the fact that there is like a pretty major outbreak of within chicken populations and also within cow populations. And this is a concern because actually there's been at least one human who has now contracted bird flu from a cow. Like, you know, if you're sitting there thinking, oh, the pandemic can't get worse. Mm, well, measles is coming back, tuberculosis is coming back, and we're about to get bird flu. Bird flu is quite dangerous because it has a, like, 50% mortality rate when, it, when it's amongst the human population. So currently, you know, there's, like, zoonotic transmission between different species of animals. So you've got chickens with bird flu, and then you've got cows with bird flu. Um, yeah, H5N1 is a super nasty strain, and that's the one that we're seeing. We've had at least one farm worker 
have this disease that he presumably caught from the cows that he was working with. And um, typically, when you first have, like, okay, the animal gives it to the humans, it hasn't yet evolved enough in humans to then spread to another human. But this is the threshold that we're on right now. This is the kind of scary area that we're on right now with bird flu is, you know, it making that evolutionary leap to not only go from an animal to a human, but then become transmissible between humans. If bird flu becomes transmissible between humans and it has like a 50% mortality rate, it's not like COVID where there's like a, like a maybe 1% mortality rate. I don't know exactly what the mortality rate is, but like of the number of people who catch it, it's nowhere near 50% who are dying, especially because we have vaccines now. Um, but yeah, this is scary because it means like we might have some serious issues amongst the human population if this becomes transmissible. And it also, um, just means bad things for our food supply because a whole bunch of hens are being culled. Like this is about uh, a Texas poultry plant owned by Calmaine Foods, which is the largest producer of fresh eggs in the US. They're currently culling 1.6 million laying hens and 337,000 pullets. USDA says safely handled and properly cooked eggs are safe to eat. So. If you eat eggs right now, or milk, if you eat eggs or milk right now, please be careful to, you know, wash your hands appropriately, make sure your eggs are cooked through all the way, don't eat raw eggs right now, maybe even avoid, like, soft boiling your eggs, like, I don't know, I would want to be totally sure if I was eating eggs right now, and with milk, it's not very common in the US for there to be easy access to raw milk products, either raw milk itself or raw milk cheese products, but only drink pasteurized milk. If you buy organic milk, double check that it says it's pasteurized on it. That means it's been raised to a certain level of heat for a certain period of time and that kills all the microorganisms in it. Um, but yeah, so I will say one, one of the kind of disgusting things that I've learned in this is that when they're cleaning the floors of the areas where cows live, they use these like high power sprayers and that can aerosolize the virus potentially because for some reason there's a lot of bird flu in the cow's udders specifically. Like it's affecting, it's supposed to be a respiratory virus, but it's affecting the cow's mammary organ, which is kind of weird. But yeah, then they spray the floor and obviously it lives in the cow shit. Viruses live in your poop. That's why we keep track of wastewater levels of COVID. Um, and it's that's also kind of similar to how we get E. coli, that like the cow's area is being cleaned and then that water runs off, but only a little bit. And then that water gets picked up by like the spray heads. And that's how you end up with E. coli all over your lettuce. That's, you know, you would think, why, why is there a bunch of... E. coli on my lettuce, why is there a recall? Because the industrialized practice of keep of like picking up after cows is disgusting. <laughs> it aerosolizes E. coli and goddamn bird flu to an extent that like, and you know, and as well, like the mammaries contain a high concentration of bird flu and these farm workers are milking these cows like twice a day, coming in very close contact with the raw milk product and the, and the literal, like, this is the contagious part of the animal. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to talk about it a little bit because it's a concern that a lot of people might not know about. And like, particularly making sure that you wash your hands after you handle eggs. You know, I think a lot of us already are kind of in a habit of doing that, but if you weren't already, make sure yeah, don't take any chances with it, too. It's just, you know, the chance of transmitting it is pretty low, but you do not want to be patient zero on it. <laughs> like, with a 50% mortality rate, you do not want to be patient zero.
Glad I live three houses down from a guy who leaves eggs and an honor box out by the roadside. Listen, just because you know a guy who raises his own chickens doesn't mean that they don't have disease. Because if because bird flu, guess what? Birds fly around. So a, a bird who's free could come in contact with some chickens who have bird flu, and then they could spread that bird flu to your chickens or your neighbor's chickens. So you still want to be careful. But yes, it is also true that these chickens are being raised in conditions that are very conducive to the spread of disease. They're like scrunched in together, you know, it's not very sanitary, it's not very healthy for them. And it's bound to happen. Anytime you smash a bunch of living creatures into a small amount of space with no aeration and like no fresh air, it's just inevitable. Oh yeah, I imagine raising your own chickens would be somewhat safer. You have more control over the process. And like, you you most likely are subject to more humane rules than the factory farmers are. There are places where it's like, you're, sub you're required to have a certain amount of square foot of free range for your chickens for each chicken. Like, you might be required to have like, four square foot for each chicken. So like, chickens that you're raising at home are legislated to be in a safer situation. I don't know if horses are affected or any other livestock. I imagine that if it's a zoonotic virus that can pass from birds to cows, then it probably would be possible for it to pass to other um, livestock and mammals, but I'm not totally sure if there's any currently affected animals. Um, and it's hard to tell with other animals, you know? The reason why we can tell that there's some that there is bird flu in cows is it because it affects the quality and amount of milk that they produce. If a cow is sick with bird flu, then the milk that it produces is a lot more like colostrum than it is like proper milk. So, you know, it's hard to say whether even male cattle are affected by it because they might not have symptoms. And like with horses, it's not like you're milking the horses coming in contact with their body fluids like that. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of talk about this subject a little bit um, and encourage people. Yeah, I do think that it would be better if you bought local eggs. I do think it would be better if, if you have a neighbor and you just give your neighbor, like you trade some casserole you made this week for some eggs like I think that is probably a good call and on top of that like making sure you're taking safety precautions especially if you are still purchasing mass-produced milk and egg products right now like they have to go through the cooking process or pasteurization It is terrifying. Virus evolution, making them dormant and symptomless. <laughs> like, all right, everything's fine. <laughs> everything's fine. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going to add that to my stream notes. I have stream notes today. I didn't plan on having any stream notes today. What is today? The third? Fourth? Third? Third. Four, three, 2024. H5N1. Oh, just throwing stuff on the floor. Oh, no, that's my stitch marker. I need that. Oh, my stitch marker. Okay. For marking stitches. Oh, it's got a hair on it. Okay. Coolio. Okay, we did one. We did a news. We've done one successful news. A virus that doesn't transmit easily and kills its host a lot of the time does tend to get selected down to rare cases. True, you know, true. Good going. One news. We did it. High five. We got one more news, and then I'm done for today. We're functionally, functionally, one person paid for no news and one person paid for news, so we're getting half as much news as we were going to get. I was going to do four stories, and now I'm only doing two. <laughs> we'll do one more. Ah. Democracy. <laughs> Exactly. Democracy. 
two news. Let's go. Let's go. Drink more water, babes. I think that medically speaking, I really should eat, drink like two of these whole things per day. And it's so much water, but I feel bad unless I drink huge amounts of water. It's so dumb. Like the amount that my muscles are hurting, it could very well be because of just a little bit of dehydration. Just a taste of democracy. We just cut the baby in half. Yeah, I'm a fair news dragon. I'm fair. Okay, we'll do one more. One more, one more, one more. The horrors know no end. It seems you know, we talk about all kinds of stuff on this channel, all kinds of anti-trans news, and it always feels like, man, this has got to be like, like as bad as it's gonna get, right? And I like it's a, I think that that's the normalcy bias pulling at your brain, the normalcy bias saying, it's not that bad, bad things happen to other people, but not to you. Oh, this disaster will probably not be that bad, like. Normalcy bias is what has you not buying extra water and not going down to your basement because you know, oh, well, usually when we get tornadoes, they just swing this other direction. Oh, it probably won't come through here. Like, statistically, it probably won't come through your specific neighborhood, but the normalcy bias is so real. Excuse me. Oh my God, I'm so burpy. Like, yeah, that sense of, oh, it can't happen here. That's the normalcy bias coming to get you. Yeah, get used to things not being how they used to be. Um, anyway, in Tennessee, apparently they've been passing some anti-trans laws or anti-LGBTQ laws, as you do. And in this particular instance, Tennessee passed a bill that will allow parents who are anti-queer, anti-LGBT, they will allow those people to adopt children and they can adopt specifically LGBTQ plus kids. Um, <clears throat> looking at this from Aaron Reed, let's make this bigger actually so you can read it. Aaron says, in a horrific move, Tennessee's passed a bill allowing parents who are religiously or morally opposed to LGBTQ plus people to adopt LGBTQ plus kids. This could result in anti-queer foster parents Putting queer kids through conversion therapy. She covers the bill in more detail in her article, but I'm just going to read this on Twitter for now. The bill, Senate Bill uh, 1738, it passed on a party line vote of 73-20. So I guess all other Republicans voted for it and the 20 Democrats voted against it. The bill states that, quote, moral beliefs regarding sexual orientation or gender identity do not create a presumption that any particular placement is contrary to the best interest of the child. This is insane to me. Like, we've decided that a parent being anti-queer, that, that just doesn't affect queer children. We've decided that that, that that makes them a good placement for that queer child. Like, what the hell here? The Department of Children's Services shall not require a current or prospective adoptive or foster parent to affirm, accept, or support any government policy regarding sexual orientation or gender identity that conflicts with the parent's sincerely held religious or moral beliefs. They're legalizing child abuse. And like, listen, the, the foster system in the U.S. is already super messed up. It's already like a human trafficking thing. It, like, it's a complicated issue. Like it's and it prioritizes religious individuals. Religious individuals then get into being foster parents. And like there was a whole huge operation like discovered a year ago that we were streaming about where these foster parents who had tons of kids coming through their house, they were literally sex trafficking these children. And like honestly, I feel like if you have certain religious beliefs that there should be an even higher bar for you as far as scrutiny to prevent you from harming children potentially like we're sitting here screening out lgbtq potential foster parents like i highly doubt 
even if my partner and I owned a house, I highly doubt that the state would approve us. I mean, I live in Kansas, so they would find some bullshit excuse to not approve us because, ooh, we're so bad for kids. But meanwhile, the state of Tennessee is literally saying parents being against the thing that the child is it's like if they made a law saying specifically that racist parents can adopt black kids. You know what I mean? Like, that's the level of fucked up that we're at here. Yeah, it's crazy how they do not view children as literal humans. No, they're just pieces on a board. They're just a concept you can invoke in order to, like, redirect the target onto, a, like, a new person. Ooh, that person's harming children. Gay people are harming children. Trans people are harming children. Let's send a mob after them. It's not like they're actual human pe people, though. It's just a concept to invoke. Let me see what else. Yeah, the department shall not deny any parents uh, eligibility to foster or adopt based in whole or in part upon the parents' sincerely held religious or moral beliefs regarding sexual orientation or gender identity. How are you scrutinizing the sincerely held religious or moral beliefs? The department um, shall not establish or enforce a standard rule or policy that precludes consideration of a parent for placement based in whole or in part upon the parent's sincerely held religious or moral beliefs regarding sexual orientation or gender identity. These beliefs do not create a presumption that any particular placement is contrary to the best interest of the child. Like, this is the official state-held position that it is in the best interests of a queer child to be put through conversion therapy. That is officially what this represents as far as, like, the state policy dictation. Their official pr presumption is that being placed with an anti-queer parent is what is desirable for a queer child. That's what they want. They want to snuff out queer people in every avenue of life. And I guess one of the easiest ways to do it is stealing children from the group and forcing them to not be like that anymore. That is one of the conditions of genocide. That's why what happened to the Native Americans was a genocide. Even if they hadn't killed a shit ton of them, they still stole their children, forced them to cut their hair, forced them to stop speaking their language and honoring their religion. And then, oh, look at that. In one generation, you have eliminated a culture because that, grand that kid cannot speak to their grandmother anymore. Like, there is such a cultural divide now. They have a new religion, a new language. They know nothing of their original whatever. That is the goal of removing children from the group. When you intercept migrant families at the southern border and you, oh, you know, we've decided that the kids, you know, we're going to put them in a nice little foster home. And then, oh, we're just going to fumble the paper paperwork uh, connecting these children to their parents. And then they get, like, permanently formally adopted by these white families that, of course, they're not making sure to teach the kids Spanish or like, no, what they're going to do is try to get that kid to culturally conform to American culture and assimilate here. It is genocide. And that's exactly the same thing happening here. Aaron points out the potential for abuse is dire because if a parent believes that conversion therapy through their church could cure the gay or trans kids, that belief is not considered contrary to the best interest of an LGBTQ child. <sighs> this is something that could be particularly harmful to, uh, to queer youth in the foster care system because studies show that 30% of foster youth are LGBTQ+, and 5% are transgender specifically. Many are in the system because of family rejection or abuse. Like, I cannot imagine being a queer kid who got kicked out of their house because they're gay or because they're trans and then being, you know, put in a foster system that is supposed to be taking care of you and then they literally place you with people who are going to take you to conversion therapy. Yeah, it truly takes any consideration of the child's well-being out of the adoption process. Like, what do you think... Like, do children get any say in this process? Like, if a child is like, I don't want to be placed with a fucking anti-queer person, is there any consideration? And when I say child in this context, remember, we're talking about anyone under 18. 
So if you're 13 years old and you've been kicked out because your mom found out that you are dating someone of the same gender, and then you get put in the foster care system, even if it's in the interim while they're trying to figure out a better placement for you, like, like, like that kid doesn't have any say. Major Domo says in the chat, when I was adopted, I was asked by a judge if I actually wanted it. That's like the pipe dream best case scenario for some kids. It's crazy how little we regard their wishes. Conversion therapy does not equate to a migrant assimilating to America. Eddie, listen to the words I said. What I said was children being stolen from their parents and like, oh, while we're processing the parent to determine if they're worthy of asylum, we're just going to take these children and place them with this wonderful white foster family and then fumble the paperwork, connecting them to their families in truth. And then we deport their actual mom and dad and then they get formally adopted by a white family here who then forcefully assimilate them. Like, I'm not just saying like, oh, migrants assimilating to America. I'm saying the process of stealing children and forcing them to stop being what they are. Because again, these white families are not going to like, they're not gonna speak to these children in Spanish. They're not gonna honor their traditional holidays. If those kids are indigenous in any way, they're not gonna have their indigenous beliefs affirmed. Has Governor Lee actually signed this Tennessee bill? Um, they've, they, I think they've passed the bill. I guess I don't know. Hold on, let me check if the governor has signed it. Let me look for the detail on that. Kitty Tech says, I know people who've been through conversion therapy. There is a special circle of hell that was constructed for the people who came up with those places. Yeah, we're talking about, you know, electro electroshock therapy. We're talking about like forcing these kids to associate really toxic ideas with their um, identities. Let me see. Okay, so we're, you, someone asked if the governor had actually signed it. Okay, it has passed through the Senate, so I think it has yet to be signed. It passed on. It passed through the Senate on uh, April the first. So today is April the third, and I'm expecting it. Usually, it might take like a week for it to get through to the governor's desk. Let's see. Does Aaron mention whether it's likely? Yeah. So the bill now goes to Governor Bill Lee's desk. She does not comment on whether it's likely that he's going to sign it, or maybe not until later. Okay, I'm checking, checking, checking. Yeah, I guess Aaron doesn't know whether Governor Lee is going to sign it or not. Let me see if there's anything else in here that we need to talk about. It's definitely worth pointing out specifically that LGBTQ plus youth are more likely to have a history with conversion therapy. Placement with new families that subject them to those same practices could have disastrous outcomes because LGBTQ youth who are subjected to conversion therapy have a 2.5 times higher suicide risk. I don't know if that's compared to the general population or compared to other queer youth who haven't experienced conversion therapy, but either way, it is not good. The human rights campaign is calling for a veto, so we'll see. That comparison is to their peers. So it's 2.5 times higher. So queer youth who've been subject to conversion therapy are 2.5 times higher to have a suicide attempt, 2.5 times more likely to have a suicide attempt versus the regular queer population, which already has a slightly higher suicide risk than the general population. 
So yeah, like, okay, talking about what's in the best interest of children, putting them in a situation where they're likely to be subjected to a type of treatment that increases their suicidality by almost threefold. That's crazy to me. Like, of course it's crazy to me. We can friggin' hope that the thing gets vetoed, but like, I don't know anything about him. Hold on, Tennessee governor. He's a Republican. I don't know if he has said anything about trans people. Well, they recently, in Tennessee, they passed one of the most restrictive drag laws, right? They were, they tried to pass a law. It ended up getting stopped in the courts, but they were passing a law that had something to do with like drag in public. And it was very far reaching and it was struck down on the basis that it intervened with the right to freedom of expression in our first amendment but they still passed it and that means that this governor signed it so if this governor signed the most restrictive drag ban that's passed in this country that was struck down by the courts or at least held by the courts while it made its way through like i really doubt that this dude is going to strike down a law that says you're allowed to abuse queer children as a foster parent essentially Yeah, I agree, Byron. It is crazy how cucked we are by religion that some obviously harmful and useless crap like conversion therapy isn't not only banned worldwide, but considered a hate crime. Conversion therapy should be considered a hate crime. It's a, it's a, an abhorrent thing to do to someone. There are fewer survival survivors of conversion therapy graduates than people who lost their lives. So of the people who quote graduate from conversion therapy, like a majority end up like harming themselves. I'm assuming that the ones who don't graduate are the ones who are like, I'm not doing all of this. And for some reason, yeah, Mormons who are super into conversion therapy are it's like, oh, that's a charitable organization. They're not harming anybody, whatever. Cross your fingers for the queer kids out there. Hope that they have something good ahead of them because man, it's gonna be rough for a few years here. Okay, I'm done with the news now. Okay, are you happy? I did news. I did super depressing news. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna add it to my stream notes now. H5N1, um, Tennessee. Conversion therapy. Boom, whoa. Nope, I need to copy paste this link. Okay. I need my chat back. Give me chat. Now I'm depressed. See? See? That's why we didn't do news today. Yeah, finally I can eat. Quick, do another thing about stitching. Listen. Oh shit, Griffy. Griffy says, I'm sorry, I should have listened to you. You warned me a few months ago not to do anything stupid, and I should have listened. I'm in Nashville visiting some friends and family. A few weeks ago, I was wearing a shirt that says the future is non-binary, and this woman stabbed me. I learned my lesson the hard way. Uh, like, yeah, okay, I would not have recommended doing that. I would personally not have recommended wearing a shirt like that in Tennessee. Um, it's fucked up that we cannot just wear a shirt like that those are the kind of considerations that we have to make like i literally i i don't want to wear this shirt i'm gonna take out my rainbow earrings um but at the same time like yeah i mean it's terrible that that's the world that we live in but in reality that's the world that we live in and i'm so sorry that you had to learn the hard way but holy shit like is she gonna get in trouble like are you gonna press charges like is she gonna get arrested oh my god that is insane 
Yeah, just stabbing a queer person in the street. That is insane. Like, I don't even know what to say. It seems likely that there would not be consequences. Like, it sort of depends, though. I'm okay. The woman is in prison. I had surgery. I'm good. Okay. Stab wounds, to be fair, in the current era of modern medicine, not very lethal, especially if you get, like, stabbed in the gut. You know, it's just a stab wound. Like, you, with surgery, it's probably, as long as you get treatment quickly, it's not going to kill you. But holy shit. Like... Like, you're not getting rid of that scar. Holy cow. I've, yeah, I've never been so riled up about anything in my life that would compel me to stab someone out of the blue. Holy shit. It's like, and it's it's not even always us that get targeted. We talked about that lady who lost her life after being shot. She was a straight woman who was just an ally who had pride flags outside her business and some 20-year-old got pissed off at her and decided to shoot her over it. True friends stab you in the front. <laughs> what if I want to get stabbed in the back? I was going to say stabbed in the butt and then stabbed in the back came out instead. I was like, I couldn't decide which what was more or less appropriate. That's wild though. I'm so sorry. Y'all be fucking careful. If you're out there in the world in even moderately conservative places, if you if you're like me and you live in Kansas and it's like, oh, I can be out and about in Kansas City and I feel like it's relatively progressive. But guess what? Like, there's all kinds of people in Kansas City. There is no guarantee that you're going to be safe even in a major metropolitan area, like within the context of a of a less safe state like, you know, Nashville might be the bluest part of Tennessee, but it's still fucking Tennessee. Yeah, like, take care of yourselves. Don't let people get near you, you know? If someone is coming near you, get your pepper spray out. Here's, here's your reminder, everybody. If you carry pepper spray, this is your reminder. Sometime this week, take it outside and check that it's still working. Double check that it's still in date. My pepper spray is good through December 2024. So a couple more times this year, I'll test the sprayer and see if it's working. And then at the end of the year, like either it'll be empty before it is like expired. Like I think, I personally think you should be testing your pepper spray often enough that it's empty before it expires. But then make sure you get a new one, you know? Like make sure you're able to keep distance between yourself and others. Yeah, check it while upwind. <laughs> yes, obviously don't make the mistake of getting pepper spray blown right into your eyeballs. Yeah, especially if you're carrying your pepper spray in your purse or on your keys. No one comes near me because I'm a fat, stinky neck beard. Listen, if you were, I mean, I don't know. It depends on where you live and what you're wearing, apparently. But that's fucking wild. Use pepper gel because it sticks. It's just more expensive and harder to get a hold of. I can get pepper spray off Amazon. Okay, well, <laughs> um, I would, I guess that one was like, uh, maybe I would have not gotten involved kind of thing. You see some woman who's already gotten violent. She slaps a waitress. And then you intervene to tell her to stop. And then she sees your gay shirt, calls you a slur, and then stabs you. Like, yeah. Getting physically close to a woman who is already being violent maybe wasn't the move. But I'm not going to victim blame you on this. It's like, yes, I can see how your choices in this moment could have been different. But also, this was a hate crime committed against you. And like, who's to say that she wouldn't have just seen you and done it anyway? So, but yeah. That would not have happened in Chicago. Yeah. 
This ain't the 1950s. Holy cow. Okay. Well, at this point in the show, I'm really hungry. We did some news. And, um... Holy shit. I honestly feel it is possible she would have stabbed anyone in that moment, but hating you did not help the situation. Yeah. I mean, she was prepared to stab somebody. Okay. Holy cow. All right. Much love, everybody, for hanging out. Thank you so much for staying through the news being canceled and then the news being uncanceled. Thank you for those donos, everybody. Um, those two big fat donos, obviously very appreciated. I will get those next month when I get my payment in May from AdSense, but still going to be beneficial at that point. So, yeah. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> we get most of our modern transphobia from the 80s and 90s. People were actually less transphobic in the 70s. Yay, the cultural imports of the 80s. Yay. All right. Much love, everybody. Have a good night.